beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the measure of your royalty. Great is the measure of your Had a shield for me, the glory and the litter of my head. Very simple song of worship says, But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, the glory and the litter. Let me sing it one more time. That's our testimony in this house. For thou, oh Lord, are a shield for me. Shield the glory and the lifter up of my head. My glory and the lifter up of my head. For thou, oh Lord, are the shield. Let's sing it together. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My glory and the lifter of my head. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me.
bless us tonight, oh God. We will never, never forget your presence. But there is nothing we can do without you. We declare it. We are not ashamed to let the world know that you are our glory. We pride ourselves only in your presence. It is of your fullness we have received. Tonight, Lord, we ask that you speak to the needs of your people. Challenge us. There are people here trusting you for all kinds of encounters. There are people here trusting you for healings, for miracles, for breakthroughs. Others trusting that you refire their lives and take them to new dimensions of the anointing. I ask tonight that you minister to everyone in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please greet one another and be seated. Hallelujah. Let's see how fast we can go tonight so that we can finish early. Pray for me. We're really working on our timing. We want to see how God will grant us grace so that I'll finish fast. Um, by God's grace, we'll make sure that we hasten every activity before my coming up so that we can have time for the word. Sorry, this is not a regular ministry. And so you find out that there's no room for drama and all of these kinds of things. Praise the Lord. And, and all the things we believe that days will come when we'll have time for that. Hallelujah. Announcements and all of these kinds of things. Praise the Lord. Tonight your life will change in a dramatic way. In the name of Jesus Christ. What I'm about to teach you will transform your life. Honestly, I'm determined this year to make sure by the grace of God that we all experience the reality of the rain. Let it not just be a song that we keep singing again and again and again. Hallelujah. We're trusting that God will really, really grant us grace. And so all the teachings that will be coming, please, I want you to pay attention, especially today's teaching. Hallelujah. I was talking to the Lord a few days ago about us, the house, and um, I really appreciated him for what he's doing. But let me start on this note. I'm a bit concerned um, at our pace of both spiritual progress and otherwise. Hallelujah. I am very, very humbled. I... As we travel around ministering the word of God, I am amazed, not, not necessarily surprised, but amazed at the impact and the transformation that this ministry and the teaching is bringing in the lives of people. We, we receive testimonies, thousands and thousands of testimonies um, from lives but then every one of them come fresh they come very fresh and really impactful um, when we begin to share maybe one day we'll have the opportunity to share some of these testimonies and you won't believe the encounters the breakthroughs there are whole churches that play koinonia messages and just sit down under that anointing and get blessed and there are all kinds of miracles that have happened to people. Liftings, encounters, you know. I think one of the greatest testimonies is the encounter that people have through the messages. Angelic encounters, heavenly encounters. They step into levels of the anointing. And some of them have never been here. Never been here. There are people, there are ministries, there are pastors that travel kilometers to come. And so I'm a bit concerned that we who are here, that God has granted us the privilege to directly sit down under this very heavy unction. I am a bit disturbed as to why the pace of our growth is a bit slow. Um, and I, I began to ask God, because I care about us. I don't just care about myself. Left for me, I am, I am bent on walking with God. And receiving testimonies from that relationship. But every true leader prides himself in the joy of the people. Hallelujah. If only the leaders succeed, we're the only ones getting 
blessed and prosperous and lifted and anointed, you know, and God is expanding and increasing our influence. Many leaders will rejoice at that, but my joy is to see that as we rise, everyone who sits under this anointing becomes a first-hand epistle of the vision. Hallelujah. So I'm a bit concerned. Honestly, I am. Um, not necessarily worried, but I began to ask the Lord because I know that the problem is not with the quality of the word. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we may not be the best, but I think we have done well in bringing the word of God in due season. So I, I really began to talk to the Lord about it. I expect 10 times the results that we see in our lives. There are people who are afar off. Never seen me, not even my picture. Some of them have had just one message, just one encounter, just one. There are people who have just one koinonia message. Just one. Koinonia teachings are so powerful, it doesn't matter which of them you get. You produce the same thing. Even if it's on marriage and what you need is healing. It doesn't matter. Just get that atmosphere. Hallelujah. And so I, I really, I want us to take, we are, not, we are not playing games. Praise the Lord. This is a real ministry. We are very disciplined and serious with the assignment that God has given us. There is a revolution going on in this nation. And I can tell you with all humility that we are contributing significantly to the spiritual renaissance that God is doing. Especially in the lives of the generations that are coming. I am humbled by those who have access to these teachings. I have met kings, I have met politicians, I have met nobles, I have met people who my level of life would never have afforded me to meet, all on account of the grace of God and what he is doing. Praise the Lord. And I expect that um, those of us who are sitting down, please volume, directly under this anointing, we should be able to walk first hand many of us have access to me there's counseling sessions even after the meeting we can even if it's a handshake a hug whatever it is you sit down directly under the worship under the prayer and all of that and, and so it is either one of two things number one either you are not really interested in pursuing this reality of the divine life to be at work in you Hallelujah. Either there is a direct negligence or there is creeping in subtly the danger of familiarity. Hallelujah. Familiarity is a disastrous thing. It has a way of destroying you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One time, Reverend Dr. Uma Pai shared a touching testimony many years ago. I heard him preach. And he said that um, his brother and the brother's friend needed a miracle. And it was, it was a financial miracle. They really needed a miracle from God. And the brother went to him and said, um, Can you give me some money? And he said, You're my brother. I can't deny it. And he gave him some money. But the friend came and said, Man of God, I really need a miracle. And he prophesied and spoke to the person. And said, your bands will never run dry. Two people. Same need. Different results. Hallelujah. There is, if your life does not change under this unction, I guarantee you something is wrong with your approach. God is in this place. Hallelujah. I was humbled by the testimony of our dear sister. And um, it doesn't take too much to see the hand of God. It just takes you being disciplined and follow instructions the problem with many of us is there is this spiritual stubbornness you know what we call i too know mentality physically see it's a it's a foolish thing when you don't have results in your life and you keep arguing with the words that come hallelujah have you seen students like that in class their cgpa is low they are not doing well yet they argue with the lecturer again and again 
and then those who are very serious those who are exceptional they sit down diligently there is an attitude look let me tell you the ball is in your court you have to choose you see people changing there are people who are changing there are testimonies that are coming you are the only one who is left you can choose to argue it and watch sick people get healed and watch god change the story of people look at people oh my god look let me tell you if i begin to share with you some of these testimonies hallelujah very humbling testimonies of the hand of god hallelujah we are too small to doubt the might of god do you know how far god can take you brothers and sisters? forget about your age look if you want to receive from God, I'm speaking to especially many of us who are students, you must remove this student mentality and bury it and, and, and know that you are only a student for a few moments. Many of us, this dependency mentality has crippled us. You have graduated for five years now, but you still believe Koinonia is not a fellowship. Koinonia is an apostolic and a prophetic move of God. It's not some kind of campus thing for just young people. Hallelujah. Please be determined that there must be an evidence in your life. Hallelujah. There must be an evidence in your life, brothers and sisters. And this is, this is my goal. I cry before God every time I pray for us. And I say, Lord, please let your people, even if it means not blessing me, no problem. Status is changing, there's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy, that's what must happen to you. My status is changing, there's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. One more time, prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way. On my way. On my way to better days. Prophesy, you're on your way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. To better day. To better day. To better day. Sing status is changing. Come on. Status is changing. The word of God is doing no something to you. Decline. We're on our way. I'm on my way. To better day. There is a better tomorrow, I tell you. Forget about today. My status is changing. There's no more decline. We're on our way to better days. We're on our way. We're on our way. On our way. That's the destiny of this ministry. Better days, we're on our way. On our way, we're on our way. On our way. On our way. On our way. To better days, better days. We're on our way. On our way. You can choose to take the flight or not. But I tell you, God is going somewhere with us. To better days. Prophesy to yourself. It's part of the meeting. We're on our way. That His glory will change something in your life. I'm on my way. To better days. To better days. To better days. We're on our way. On our way. It doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. Hear me. It doesn't take time. 
it just takes having access to the keys it doesn't take a lot of stories and discussion there is what you can hold on to when you catch it you have caught it it will change your life men will talk they will only talk for nonsense you will only be moving like a star that cannot be stopped but the question is are you willing it's not enough to just listen there is no situation you are in that is the worst in the earth there are people in a worse situation but this word has taken them out of it and honored them it may look like there is a delay but you must tell yourself the glory of God is changing me this is already a word for somebody tonight you may not look like it brothers and sisters forget about it your status is changing there's no more decline you're on your way to better day let them laugh at you today your status is changing your status is changed. No more decline. There's no more decline. You're on your way. You're on your way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. My status is changing spiritually, financially, in every respect. No more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way. I'm on my way, on my way, I'm on my way, to better day. Now pray and say, Lord, give me focus. Help me to settle with the word. Whatever distracts me. Whatever distracts me, whatever is robbing my life, I'm ready to be a student. I'm ready to submit myself. Go ahead and pray. I'm ready to lay down my pride to get what works. I'm ready to submit myself. I'm ready to lay down my pride. I repent from arguing with the word. Give me the keys, so oh God. Let my hands handle them. Pray. I lay down my pride. I lay down my pride. I submit to the word of God. I lay down every argument. Every vain talk. I submit to the word. I want to see results in my life. There is something I do not know. Show me, oh God. There is something that connects me to the next level. You are changing the life of others. Don't forget about me. I am willing. You are changing the life of others. I am willing. You are changing the story of others. I am willing. I take my eyes away from my failures. I take my eyes away from limitations. I take my eyes away from criticisms. I am not stiff-necked. I am not stubborn. I am malleable to your word. yes lord i submit to your word it has changed many it has produced champions and generals On our way, we're on our way to better day. I like you to see your future and prophesy. I'm on my way. Oh, they will hear my voice. On my way. They will see his glory upon my life. I'm on my way.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. We submit to your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please pick up your Bible, First John chapter 5, verse 4. God bless you. Let's get straight to the word. There is a lot to talk about. First John 5, verse 4. Please pay attention. If you are here, sit down, sit down, sit down. God bless you. Please look up, everyone, before we read that scripture. I expect everyone coming for Koinonia to at least buy a book like this. Praise the Lord. All these pieces of papers we have that we throw powerful revelations on it. Get something like this. Please, pay attention. Just be a student for a while and let the world honor you. Forget about pride, please. I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Young and old, rich or poor, whatever you, when you come to the presence of God, just follow instructions. Your next dimension is in the instruction you follow. Hallelujah. Don't be too, don't do big manism before God. For the kingdom is for children. Get a notebook. Get a good biro. Don't come around if, if, if you have devices or phones that you can, you can, you know, record and write very well. Do so. Don't just sit down and be careless. When you are inviting others, let them know that they are not just coming for fellowship. Hallelujah. If you love them enough, buy it and give them. Buy it. There are lots of jotters that we get from wedding. Free. Huh? Instead of writing your problems on it and writing all the people that hurt you, why don't you bring it, sow it as a seed to somebody? Get this. This is my own notebook. There are many others like this. It shows that you respect what God is teaching you. In the book of Revelation, when John saw everything, he told him, write. He didn't say, think about it. He didn't say, crime it. He said, write, for these words are faithful and true. When prophet Elisha was passing and the Shunammite woman perceived that this was a holy man of God, when they decorated his room, they kept a table for him there so that he would write. The ancient wrote, you must write. Hallelujah. Please, when you come, that's why we have time to say hug one another. When we say hug, hug. When we say sit down and listen, no loitering around, walking around, pinching this is is demonic it's not just bad it's demonic i'm telling you it's, it's the spirit of distraction your mind cannot do too many things at once hallelujah when the word is coming that's when you remember that oh i i need to do this i need to do that somebody is pinging you are pinging the person it's demonic pay attention hallelujah please inside and outside even if you don't have a seat pay attention somebody is smiling and telling you have you seen their uniform tell the person please don't distract me i'm tired of my situation and my life must change don't distract me if you say it once you won't repeat it again but by the time you start entertaining nonsense in the middle of something powerful that should liberate you the person will say can you imagine was it a uh, that we've won, how much did you even say it? This is not the place to discuss all this for God's sake. Of course, we appreciate ourselves. But if you don't place value for the word, it will never change you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. First John chapter 5. You will thank me tomorrow. You may not like me today. But I love you too much to leave you the way you are. Many are already thanking me. And those who didn't listen are now listening in a painful way. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words be First John 5, verse 4. Everyone read is projected. One, two, read. And this is the victory that overcomes. What is it? Even. Replace our with my. Are you ready? 
Read it one more time. Even my faith. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38 tells us that the just shall live by faith. Hebrews 10 verse 38. Media, you have to really help us today. Let's see how we can rush. I want us to finish on time. Hebrews 10 38. It says the just shall live by faith. In fact, frankly speaking, four times in scripture it is recorded that the just shall live by faith. But I'll just speak to Hebrews 10 verse 38. Hallelujah. It says, now the just shall live by what? Faith. But if any man draw back, draw back in what? In living by faith. It says, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. The just shall live. Let me interpret it for you. The quality of your life here on earth is dependent on your understanding of what faith is and how it works and this is what i'm going to be teaching you tonight what faith is and how it works the operation the dynamics that's what i would have taught last week but i was away and and the holy spirit told me no you must teach this my people need to hear it because they need to understand not just what faith is but how it works true bible faith that will produce results for you. Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 4. It personalizes it in a very powerful way. I love the prophet. He said the just shall live by his faith. Not your neighbor's faith. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. It says behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. But the just shall live. By what? You will prosper. By your understanding of faith. You will step into the anointing and the glory of God. The quality, the measure of the glory and the grace of God you will see in your life is dependent on faith. There are, there are free seats here. Please let it be a tradition from now that every time we begin the service, if there are people standing, some people should sit on their seats. There is a vacant seat here. There is another one that I see. I don't know why there should be those seats. There are people standing outside. Please, ushers, you should know that. Let's, let's occupy all the seats, please. Hallelujah. The just shall live by his faith. Everyone say the quality of my life is dependent on my understanding of what faith is and how it works. One more time. Say the quality of my life is dependent on my understanding of what faith is and how it works praise the lord the subject of faith is very important for the christian experience um there have been many teachings on faith many many teachings in fact it's been the core teaching in many christian circles but there are a lot of misunderstandings about the true operation of faith and i trust that god will help us to be able to balance it i want to go really straight to the point and that very very fast hallelujah it's not that our regular or popular teachings on faith are wrong but many teachings about faith please look up many teachings about faith are not complete faith is an equation faith is a formula are you following me now and the components must be complete for it to work here and there different men of god preachers great men and women of god have caught certain dimensions of what faith is and how it works but to be able to give it a very balanced scope such that it works for those who practice it is where the problem has been hallelujah let's look at a few um a few incomplete revelations of faith that have come to the body of christ number one or some corrections on the imbalances number one it has been popularly taught that faith is believing no that's not it 
at all. Faith is not just believing. That's the point I want you to get. Be to believe is very important. It's part of the equation of faith. But it's not all there is to faith. You see that? For somebody straight up, this is your deliverance. Because you have been taught that faith is just believing. If you believe, that's all. No, sir. I can tell you this categorically. That's not the whole equation. Belief talks of conviction. Belief talks of persuasion. When you believe a thing, it means that you are convicted. It means that you are persuaded. But it does not mean it will produce for you. Please, let's understand that. Belief is part of the process of manifesting faith, but not all of it. It is part of it, but it is not all of it. Please get this revelation. Oh, I believe God, I believe God, I believe God. Wonderful. That's only a step. That's not everything. Many of us, innocent believers, have stopped there. Believing God is not enough. Belief talks of your conviction. It is part of the overall equation, but it is not all of it. Number two, faith is not just confession, mm. body of Christ. Faith is not just confession. I'm dictating it so that you will write. Confession is part of the process of manifesting faith, but not all of it. Please, you must get this. Confession. In the equation of faith, there is a point where confession comes in. But that is not all there is to Bible faith. See that? Many of us have been taught by well-meaning people through the years in our different Christian circles across this nation and for those listening outside of this nation and all of that, we've been taught that all there is to faith is just speak. When you speak it, you have it. No, sir. I tell you the truth from God's word and from this Bible. No, sir. It doesn't happen that way. Are you getting blessed? Hmm. So, faith is not just confession. You must realize this. If confession were all that there was to manifesting faith, I guarantee you there are people who would have been living like angels in the earth today because there are people who speak. I'm not against confession. There is a place. Remember in our teaching, spiritual laws. There is a place. Confession activates. There is a law of speech and sound. But that's not the only law. So it is true that confession is part of the process of manifesting faith. But not all of it. So believing is not all of it. It's only part of it. Confession is not all of it. It's only part of it. Number three, faith is not just sowing seeds. Faith is not just sowing seeds. Many in the body of Christ have been taught that faith is equal to seeds. So no, sir. Sowing of seeds is also part of the equation. It's activating the law of seed time and harvest. But that is not all there is. You see the imperfections. So when I camp around believing, on one side we have those who believe. Just believe. And if you really believe, it happens. That's not exactly true. Hallelujah. Or confess. And if you confess, that's all. No, that's not exactly true. Or sow seeds. The moment you are trusting God for a house, you sow a seed for that house and go and rest. And it happens. No, sir. No, sir. There is an equation. God is not a fraud star. Are you getting my point? That, those kinds of attitudes make God look like a 419er. Right? And this is the reason why many people write against men of God in newspapers. They call us all kinds of things. They call us money mongers. They call us uh, metaphysical people. They call us talkatives because the incomplete teaching. See, let me tell you something, especially for those of us who are men of God here or will be called into ministry. Realize that the church is an institution, both a spiritual institution and a social institution. 
we influence culture we shape people the mindset in nigeria has largely been altered through the church for good now are you getting me nigeria is said to be the most religious country in the whole world and this is because of the presence and the influence of the church there is a place that the church is playing in nation building and and that that puts a lot of pressure on the man of god because what that means is when you mislead people it will create a ripple effect right there are some of you as you come and sit down under this anointing as you hear the things i preach you take them some of you verbatim back to your fellowships your members because you believe you want them to receive the same result and that means i must be careful if i teach you error it becomes harder to correct it when it has left me are you seeing how error grows because when you go now and you are communicating to your churches or your groups or your fellowships it may not be exactly as i said it it will be based on what you understand right by what i said and so the the error keeps multiplying as it goes down the line that's why we pray in the spirit for accuracy of utterance so that we can communicate only that which is consistent with the mind of god are you blessed so faith is not just believing never forget this number two faith is not just confession the word confess comes from the hebrew word homologio it means repeat as you have heard so there is a place for that the law of sound the creative power of spoken words but that's not all there is now i understand that there are times that we men of god take this aspect fragment by fragment and and i understand that that's not what i'm talking about there are people who have taken this in koinonia we have examined all of these aspects in details one by one and that is just for understanding but when it comes to manifesting faith you must be able to piece up all the fragments together are you getting my point now to complete the equation otherwise what you are doing is not bible faith say amen, amen. praise the lord faith is not just about sowing seeds otherwise what difference do we have with those who just give charity around there are unbelievers who sow cars sow houses is that true faith is a law never forget this faith is a law meaning it works anywhere it is accurately practiced when it is released anywhere a law is not something that is territorial necessarily it's a principle that works anywhere it is diligently practiced salt is salt in nigeria salt is salt in bangladesh salt is salt in israel salt is salt in ukraine salt is salt in the bahamas hallelujah a gun is a gun in nigeria right a gun is a gun in israel what a gun can do in nigeria it can do in uk that's how faith is is a law so write very quickly the principles of manifesting the faith that works the principle of manifesting the faith that works i'm being very simple tonight because i really want us to get this this is very core and foundational to our understanding and our success in life the principle of manifesting the faith that works let me have two people please any two people Come. please watch this stand here Benga. you stand here please. watch this why is faith very important in the life of the believer i want you to watch these people this is hold this this is god wanting to reach out to man this is the blessing watch this this is the breakthrough this is the healing this is the prosperity this is the new level of grace this is the insight are you getting me and here is man god so designed it that there is between god his desire to bless you 
and down at your end your desire to receive there is a law that connects that that law is called faith are you getting me now faith is important because it is the biblical platform that authorizes God's power to come into your life faith is the platform that authorizes God's ability my brother wants to see the power of God and it's not like God's ability is crippled Lord I want prosperity Lord I want healing Lord I want a miracle take me to another level I want to begin to have encounters in the spirit this is it this is it fully paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ right and this is another imbalance that preachers say the fact that a thing has been paid for does not mean it comes to you automatically is that true I can pay for something and tell you when you go to the supermarket it's paid for but that does not mean it has been delivered automatically see that faith faith is what connects you watch this this brother is standing desperate oh God would you not change my situation 10 years 15 years nothing has changed he's born again he believes in Jesus he believes Jesus died he's a tongue talker maybe he even pays tithe in church so seed confesses the word but nothing is changing because this connection are you seeing it now God is asking that you authorize him there is a connection between the power of God and where it is needed in this earth realm faith are we following now between you and that breakthrough is your ability to connect are you willing to authorize the hand of his majesty he wants to come make no mistakes about it God wants to reveal himself as a loving God the love of God compels him to want to bless us but the problem is that we have not been taught how to connect stretch your hands promise and connect this this is faith once you lay hold on this then there is, there's no limit again there are many of us thank you very much guys God bless you and I don't know what they were thinking about they're thinking they're always thinking in partition hallelujah praise the Lord <laughs> that's why I gave the example from beginning so that your your desires will not be disappointed praise the Lord could it be brothers and sisters that where you are where your family is it's not just because the devil is so powerful. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not just because you may not be praying correctly, but maybe you have not been taught. There is nothing wrong in not knowing. The problem is when you are not willing to learn. Hallelujah. Faith is the platform. Never forget this. This is why we need faith. The platform that authorizes God's ability to be made manifest in a person's life. God needs an authorization to step into your life because he gave man willpower. When he said, let them have dominion, it became scripturally incorrect for God to interfere with man's life just like that. No. He needs an authorization. That's why the Bible says in the book of Revelations, it said, behold, I stand. And what? And what? This is God speaking. Why will he be knocking? Won't he just step in and say, I created you. Open that door whether you want it or not. No. Behold, I stand and knock. And I will keep knocking for as long as you are willing to open it. Tonight, may we authorize God to step into our lives. And you will see how small many situations are. Praise the Lord. Everybody say, the faith of God is at work in me. So what then is this equation of faith? How does it work? Now that we know that faith is not just, um, I would define faith at the end of the teaching, but that the workings of faith, we have little bits and pieces of it. So here and there we confess the word and we seem to have some consolation, but nothing major happens. Here and there we sow seeds, very good. But then that's not all there is. Here and there, we, we um, do what again? We are convicted. Oh Lord, I believe you. 
Are you not the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? God says, yes, so I am. Huh? Are you not the one that parted the Red Sea? God will say, of course. Say, Why are you not parting my situation? And then God says, allow me. Authorize me. Authorize me. That's why the Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for every outcome of your life is an irresponsible Christianity. I repeat, the Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for every outcome of your life, meaning I don't do anything. All I have to do, after all, I was a sinner. You are the one who died for me. I didn't ask you. Now that you have died for me, make sure that everything goes well. Give me tea. Give me bread. Do everything for me. See that? And there is an imbalance of the grace message that if not careful, stretches to that limit. Where it tells you God should do everything for you. No, sir. There are two dimensions of grace. Let me say it very quickly. I've listened to a lot of great mess, grace messages by different men and women of God. And I agree absolutely with them in many aspects. There may just be a need for some little adjustments here and there. Who's that? What's wrong with her? She's sick. Huh? Who brought her? You came with her. Hold her now, protocol, and let her talk. Huh? Please hold the mother and let the lady come. Come, you. You can hold the mother. What's wrong? Her kidneys. Hold on, please. Where are you taking her? No. Bring her. It's a spirit. Bring her. It's not that she's restless and she wants to go out. It's the spirit. That's what happens to many people when they come for miracle service. Once I come up, you see them restless. They say, I'm going. It's a spirit. How long has this been? Huh? Can she talk? Mama, how are you? How long are you? Her brother, how long has this been? Her kidneys are what? Renal failure. Shika, you believe that Jesus will change all this? As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing. Jesus, we believe. Jesus, there is healing in your name. One more time, come on, sing. Imagine this were your mother. Jesus. Don't cry. Don't cry. In the name of Jesus, the anointing is on all of you. All three of you. Right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I cause this devil of darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command brand new kidneys right now. Mommy, brand new kidneys. In the name of Jesus, I cause that devil of infirmity. I see you in the spirit. Go! In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Renal failure, I cause you. By the blood of the eternal covenant, I cause you. I curse 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 you. Hallelujah. Mama, look at me. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am healed. I am. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am. I am. Look at me. Everybody leave her. Leave her alone. Come. 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 Help her. Come. Help her. Hold this, please. Help her. 
That devil is a liar. Please put this in. Walk. Come. Leave her. Don't hold her. Just guide her. Come. Come. Just turn around. Turn around. Help her. Turn around. Come. Kidney failure. That devil. Is. Look at she's happy. Look at what is happening. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Come. That devil is a liar. Let her come. Let her come. Help her. Just guide her. Let her come. That devil is a liar. Lift your legs, mama. Go ahead. Lift your legs. Lift your legs. Lift your legs. In the name of Jesus. Listen. This is witchcraft. Your mother would have died on Sunday. They would have told you this woman is dead. She would have slept like that and woken up. Because as I looked, I saw the spirit. And I was looking, I said, what is this? And they were carrying her out. Look, it's better for them to come and die here than to get up. We are not playing games. This just came to prove the teaching. I'm about to say some other things. You must believe. They, they believed God, but they didn't stop there. They would have stayed in Shika, and this woman would have died. Because I see in a vision, Sunday, they would have said it's over. Huh? Don't cry. Don't, don't cry, gentlemen. In the name of Jesus. Mama, I assure you, you will come back and stand here to give your testimony. That wicked spirit that has been tormenting you. Huh? Go and look. Has she been eating? She has not been eating. Because the Holy Ghost is ministering to me that Mama is hungry. Find something for her to eat. God bless you. Take her. Lift your hands and let's bless his name for one minute. Please sit down, sit down, sit down. Let's hurry up. Let's continue. Sorry about that. There is a spiritual strategy for manifesting faith. Just like we saw. I don't know how long our mother has been, but in seconds, you can authorize the power of God. See, I already sense the healing anointing. So as you are listening to me, if you are sick here, this is always what happens. Because when once, one miracle happens, the water is stirred, right? Very important. Brothers and sisters, listen. It's not like these guys could not have prayed for mama there is nothing special about me this is what i want you to understand the goal i know some of you are saying i don't agree there's just listen to what i'm telling you you know you know as i preach i i discern your thoughts i know what you are agreeing with and what you are not agreeing with Hallelujah. The equation of faith. Let me give you an equation of faith that if you practice, I guarantee you are touching the integrity of the maker of heaven. You will be shocked at what your life will become. It will begin to produce immediate results for you. Immediate results. Hallelujah. Pray in tongues for one minute as we prepare to receive this. We're hurrying up. Please take it serious. Say, Lord, open my eyes. Don't just hear. Don't just look. See. Inside and outside. Pray in tongues. Participate. Open our eyes. We submit to you. Great Spirit of God. Open our eyes. And this is the faith that overcomes. Even our faith. This is... Number one.
the faith of God that produces results in your life always starts with revelation. Bible faith, please hear me, always starts with revelation. You can never manifest true faith until there is a revelation. A revelation. The first piece of the equation of faith is revelation and there are two dimensions to revelation please look up the first is study 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 and the second is meditation you don't have revelation just by wishing study it first starts by searching out you cannot have faith in what you do not know i love this baby come Ah, she's afraid. She's going to run to her mother now. <laughs> May God bless. One, one of these days, our children will open the service for us. All of them will just hold the mic and blast in tongues for 10 minutes. Oh yes, many of them pray in tongues. At their age, we didn't even know whether, but, but God is doing a lot of work in our children. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's continue. Revelation. So it starts with diligently searching. Everybody say diligently searching. Now, the problem with many believers, you cannot spend your life just reading newspapers, chase magazines, name them, all those kinds of rubbish and expect to have Bible faith. Even if there is a column where a man of God quickly shared something, faith doesn't come that way. Brothers and sisters, there is an investment you must make in studying the word. Look at me. This is your promised land you must walk through it every time you read the bible it's like you are walking through your promised land to see what god has given you to see what has been apportioned to you so as i study this i see verily verily i say unto you he that believeth on me the works that i do he shall also do greater works than this as i study i begin to see if ye be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, to do and observe all that I command thee this day. Right? That you will be exalted above all nations, and these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. Are you getting my point? When you are studying the Bible, imagine that you are walking around your land of promise. When you study the Bible, you are seeing the things that have been paid for. Are you getting my point? That cancer is killing you. And you take the Bible and you search. And you see where he hung on that cross and he said, It is finished. But that has not entered you. You are aware. Remember, you are getting revelation and this is only the first part. That's why I'm telling you what many people call faith is not faith. So I begin to walk around the promised land. Like he told Abraham, he said, from where thou art, lift up your eyes and look eastward, northward. That's what you do. When you begin to study, it's like you are walking through your land of promise. Brothers and sisters, you may be soaking Gary, just walk through the land. You are, you are no problem. There is no stove to boil the Indomie. Break it as you are eating, walk Walk. You think I don't know how that thing works? <laughs> don't be fooled by what you see. There is a testimony of the transition of faith. See that? I was sharing with a lady that once upon a time, I used to buy bread and cut it and put granite. There's a way you arrange it so that with every bite, you know, the whole surface area is covered. You push it in. You are not the first to do it. So all that insult you've been insulting God, you said, look, there are people who did not even have the bread. Right? And God brought them out of it. So he will, he will bring you up. We just sang that our status is changing. But it starts as I walk through the land of promise. Everybody say the word of God is my land of promise. Say one more time, the word of God. I know tonight's teaching is very simple, but don't trivialize the power of it. The word of God 
is my land of promise. Ha! So I study, brothers and sisters. See, as I'm, I, I feel like just sitting down to start studying the Bible. As I'm just talking to you now. A weak person, a non-entity, nobody knows you. But when you walk through that land of promise, you are already engaging something. You may not understand. There's, I'm not denying the, look, I'm not denying the fact that you are in pain. Don't get me wrong. Faith does not deny what is happening. You see that? Aha. Uh -huh. So if I'm sick and I say, I have headache, it's not negative confession. No. Please. If you want to say you are well, say you are well. But if I'm sick and I tell you something is, is pinching me here, it's not lack of faith. Are you getting my point? Many of us have felt so guilty. We don't even know when you are serious, when you are saying the real thing or not. You say, bros, can we get 20 naira? I say, I'm rich. Say, no, no, no. The issue is, you know, if you don't want to say, okay, there's nothing exactly in the pocket. Please, don't feel embarrassed. Don't make it look like the word of God makes you a fool. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't just speak anyhow and then things change. Speaking is a law. The Bible says a curse causeless shall not stand. Are you getting what I'm saying? So don't just say if I speak anyhow, whether I believe it or not, something happens. Be wise. That's why we are growing. Praise God. Study. So I walk through this thing. Look, let me tell you how I study. Let me show you how I study. I don't study foolishly. I study strategically. Everybody says strategically. My goal of studying the Bible is not to crime scriptures. There are real needs on ground. Cramming does very little in helping you produce results. I hope you are aware. You can cram Genesis to Revelation. The part you truly act out in faith is the part that works for you. Is that true? So, I write different aspects of my life that I want to see the glory of God revealed. I write ministry. I write my finances. Are you following me now? Different aspects. And I begin to walk through the garden of the Lord. My promised land. Finding out what God's idea what are his promises what is his what does his word have to tell me about this how far can I be anointed to what limit the problem is you see the reason why the devil kills your word study life right see when the devil wants to destroy you there are three things he just attacks it's very easy number one he kills your word life Number two, he kills your prayer life. Number three, he kills your corporate fellowship life. When these three are dead, you are finished. It's as simple as that. Just three things. You want to go and study and all of a sudden that lukewarmness. Notice, ladies, you've read novels that are two times larger than this. But to read just three or four pages. That's to tell you there is a devil that does not want you to see something. Are you getting my point? I can give you a storybook and you can read. Many of you have gone to the library. You have gone to different things. There are many people who in your place of work, you are given tasks that require you reading voluminous books and you do all of that within a week. But how come when it comes to studying this, you thought it's because the letters are small. You brought you bought large letter edition. It's still is big. There is a there is a spirit. Hallelujah. Everybody says study. study. It starts there. Let me not deceive you, brothers and sisters. Faith is not cheap. If you understand this, you will respect everyone who walks by faith. True Bible faith starts the encounter of the word. When you study, you find the promises when you find the promises the next thing is meditation everybody say meditation is still part of getting to the point of revelation i'm trying to break down how faith truly works say meditation what is meditation the word meditation as as it's not just to to speak aloud the word meditation is the process that makes a revelation become your own you see that Okay, now you are studying. He told Peter, for instance, cast your net to the right side. How does that story relate to your situation in Zaria? Meditation. 
meditation begins to draw out the spirit of that word. It begins to personalize it. It's in the place of meditation that some of us even have encounters. Real encounters. While you are meditating under a heavy unction, you can sleep and then you have a dream. In that dream, you can have encounters. Some of you can see men of God. Some of you can see people. And that thing crystallizes your conviction. You get up and hold that scripture and say, I caught this. See that? When, when there is meditation, the end of it is conviction. The whole goal of revelation is to bring you to a point of conviction. Another word is persuasion. I'm showing you how Bible faith starts. Persuasion. Persuasion. If you are not persuaded, you cannot finish the equation because you will doubt on the way. So you must strengthen your persuasion before the journey begins. Hallelujah. You don't believe in tithing. You just did it because your pastor laughs at you and said, look, you have not been paying tight. I'm, I'm watching those who are standing. I'm working in the same office with you. It's, it's me that pays your salary. Eh? And, and you get angry. And you get afraid. And so just to please your pastor, you just squeeze your envelope and frown and stand. And you lift it up. Let him see you. I'm dropping it now. You won't be blessed that way. That's mechanical. I never do things until I have the revelation for them. It's painful to do a thing without having the revelation. You'll be trying to copy others. And after wasting your time, you won't get their results. Don't be hasty in doing anything. Get a revelation. Hallelujah. Do you spend time meditating? Let me tell you, one of the greatest key to meditation is silence. Many of us are too noisy for the word of God to become alive in us. It's God speaking to us. There are times in the night, late in the night, I just carry a chair and I go outside and I just sit down. No noise. All the noise makers are asleep. And I just sit down and I'm just praying in tongues. Thank you Lord Jesus. Sometimes I could just carry, worship is not noise. You can have that faint atmosphere of worship and you're just sitting down all of a sudden a scripture like an arrow will fire into your spirit when you share it with somebody you'll be disappointed that they don't jump at it the way you jump because it's a revelation to you have you ever shared a scripture with somebody and said my goodness my brother you are slapping your head while you're talking say, ah, is it not last week's coin on your and you live there so sad and disappointed don't be disappointed they are life to those who find them. To those who find them. It has become your revelation. Now you are ready to move to the next level. Are we following now? So the equation starts with what? Number one is revelation. And under revelation, it takes study and meditation. When a revelation has truly entered your spirit, it will bring conviction. Listen, I've said it again and again and let me repeat it. Revelation is not knowing what God has said. That's study. Revelation is knowing what it takes to make it work in your life. Hmm. Number two, the second dimension, the moment conviction and persuasion is there, you believe it. That's where many of us stop. But that's not all there is. Let me shock you. The next dimension to the equation of faith is prayer. And I'll tell you why. It's not just acting. It's prayer. Listen to me. I'm telling you what works. Prayer. When you catch a revelation, the next thing is not to run. You will miss something major. This is where a lot of people miss it. Are you getting it now? When you catch a revelation, brothers and sisters, the next dimension is prayer. An investment praying in tongues. I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are not filled with the Holy Ghost with evidence of praying in tongues. Real fluent spiritual tongues given by the Holy Ghost. Contend for it. We are more than ready to minister to you here. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost has settled this issue of tongues or no tongues in the body of Christ. You are the only one who has not had the revelation. 
It's a done deal. It's a settled thing. The advantages of praying in the spirit is, is beyond any denominational barrier, whatever it is. What does prayer do to you? Two things. Prayer reveals the strategy. Kabbalah katabalataya. Hmm. It's not enough to know what God wants to do. There is always what you must do to commit God. Prayer is where you get the strategy. Hear me. It is not every place in scripture where the condition is verbatim. There are some situations that are customized to you. Let me give you an instance. You now read how Jesus healed blind Bartimaeus, right? Or how God opened the womb of Anna. I'm a, okay, well, I'm not a woman. I wanted to use an example. Of, <laughs> praise the Lord. Now, but imagine that there is a woman who is buried, unable to take in. And now she begins to meditate, seeing the ministry of fruitfulness all in the Bible. All the scriptures that God has placed for fruitfulness and all the barren women in the Bible who God opened their womb, she's studying and in it she begins to find spiritual keys. Are you getting my point? What they did, it does not mean you just, you can stand up, your situation may not afford you the opportunity to do exactly what they did. For instance, some people left to Jericho. Where is your own Jericho? That you, are you getting me? It is in the place of prayer. The Holy Ghost gives you your customized strategy. Are you getting my point? Two things happen in prayer. We are, we are a praying ministry. See, you must be a man of prayer to appreciate what I'm saying. If you don't pray, it won't make sense to you. As you begin to pray, the strategy comes. You can't obey until the instruction comes. Are you getting my point? Strategy. So I begin to pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, a crowd is packing full here. How are we going to get another venue? And I'm praying, humanly speaking, there may not be another venue. Lord, we thank you. What are you saying? And I begin to study the wilderness ministry of Jesus. How did they manage the crowds? What did they do? But we are not in the wilderness. So I need a rema. Are you getting my point? Prayer is what brings the spirit of the revelation. And then you will hear a word for you. Sometimes you can be praying. It is in the place of prayer that you get the customized revelation. And then two things happen. Number one, I told you, you get the strategy or the instruction. The second thing is you receive the grace supplied for obedience. You can never obey God until grace is given to you. Because some of the instructions that you will get from the place of prayer will be too hard. Some of the instructions may be empty your account. Some of the instructions may be pray all through the night. Is someone getting what I'm saying? Some of the instructions may be make sure you come and buy water here for three weeks. All kinds of instructions. That's why he not only gives you strategy, he releases the grace. Many people try to obey without the grace. This is the two-part dimension of grace that I want to explain to you. There is the dimension of grace that brings you into the finished work of Christ. And there is the dimension of grace supplied to you to obey, to actualize it. Right? It has been paid for, but you need grace to ensure its delivery. Someone's situation is changing. So you see that you prayed, you believed it. Oh, a job is coming. I found that revelation where Jesus, the, the master, told them, He said, Why sittest thou idle? You see, you have to search. Lord, I'm jobless. Uncle, give me a job. You will, you will be frustrated forever. All those uncle and thing. Many of us have never paid attention to this other option. You just hear it. But why don't you go back to the word of God? Lord, I don't have a job. Holy Spirit, guide me. And all of a sudden, the spirit of God, who, who searches the mind of God, begins to reveal to you. And you find that parable, for instance. You find the parable where Jesus was sending people into the vineyard. Is that true? And he met some people and said, why sittest thou idle? Is that not a scripture now that relates to your situation? True study. There are Bible concordances. There are Greek and Hebrew Bibles. 
There is Bible Gateway. There are many Bible softwares that ease your search. Huh? Scriptures on joblessness. Google. Enter. And scriptures come out. No, no, no. Look, don't laugh. Except you don't want a job. And you bring them out. Some may make sense. Some may not make sense. Just scan them. And you find you don't need plenty. It may just be one. And now you are getting that scripture. Watch this. When you get that scripture, you meditate. Lord, open my eyes. What made the master to call them? Was there anything on their part that they did? Is there something in between the line in this story that my eyes has not seen? Hallelujah. And you get it so God is able. You see, the might, the revelation of the might of God begins to down on you. If God gave these people jobs and he paid them salary, it means I can get a job and they will pay me salary. And you begin to pray. The moment you begin to pray, don't just get up and act and say, yes, I've caught it, application. I hereby write for a job in this company. You must give me. What grace is sponsoring that, 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 that religiosity? That's religion. That's why you open the office and they'll say, what are you saying? You say, I want a job. They say, walk out of here. Do you think? And you, and you now live disappointed. You went with a lot of zeal. God is good. He has done me well. And, and now you are there and, and you are disappointed because you did not finish the equation of faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The next thing you would have done is to take that revelation to the place of prayer. The threshing floor. Where your customized unique instruction is given. Somebody's breakthrough is already happening to him. Because God is showing you the missing link. It will work. And then I begin to pray. This is how I do with koinonia messages. I play the messages. And while the messages are playing. Because there are some things that I said by the Holy Ghost. The man of God is preaching and Joshua Selman is listening to him. And while he's preaching and praying, and I just hear something. Once you hear it, you are ready to act. Because the moment an instruction comes, that instruction can still refer you back to the Bible. Right? It doesn't just mean that you see an angel with wings. You can hear it and then an instruction will come. You can be praying and say, Lord, change my situation. As I go for koinonia, change my situation. And while you are praying, Lord, I believe you will change my life tonight. And while you are praying, a scripture just come. Jesus told the lepers, go and show yourself to the priest. You see that? That's a revelation that would have not made sense in a normal day. But to you, it is God's rema to you. And the Bible says, as they went. What God does that mean? It means you should stand up and go. See that? And as you go, you commit the integrity of God to perform. So prayer reveals the strategy and it also supplies grace. Because there are some instructions, especially financial instructions. Some of you, you, have not, you are not givers. That's why it, 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 you don't get... There are some people here who are reckless givers. If you are a true giver, you know that you need grace. It's called giving grace. Because you are crying and saying, Lord, change my situation. Lord, I leave this 10,000. Something must happen. I don't have an uncle. I don't have an auntie. My father is dead. My mother is dead. I don't have anybody. I didn't have the opportunity to go to school. You are the only one I have. And Lord, if you do not help me, I have seen in the word of God that these are the situations. And God says, take now thy Isaac, that son. Are you a fool? You are about to go and use that money and at least even buy a Bible with it. And God says, I know it's a Bible you want to buy. Forward match. Sometimes God can tell you to go and sow it into the life of somebody you don't love. You can't pretend you didn't hear it. See that? But in that instruction, you are now ready to obey. That's the last final phase of the equation of faith. Prompt and complete obedience. Please write. Number one is revelation. Number two is prayer. Number three is prompt and complete obedience. Having all readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Prompt and complete obedience. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Please let's hurry up. 
Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. This is the hardest part of the equation of faith. Settling down to study is not the hard part. This is the labor dimension of faith. Are you getting me? This is where you labor in the spirit. It says, if ye be what? And not willing and desirous. Not willing and hungry. If ye be willing, revelation makes you willing. But obedience, the hardest part. This is the link, brothers and sisters. This is the consummation of the faith equation. No matter what else you do that you call faith, if you do not obey, it is not called faith. Hallelujah. Confession. Sowing of seeds only become potent when we are willing to obey. When we are willing to obey. Everybody say obedience. I have found out that this is the link between where you are and where you need to go. Brothers and sisters, obedience is not child's play. Obedience is hard work. That's why you must receive the grace in the place of prayer. Lord, I know you are about to speak and I cannot pretend that I'm not hearing you. So grant me the grace that when the instructions come, may they not be too heavy. Yes. 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 Yes, that's all I'll say to him. Yes, yes, yes. I'll say yes. That's your link to the next level. Yes. When you hear that instruction, yes. it means your season is about to change. Yes. I'll say yes. If you are willing to obey, no power in existence can stop you from going to the next level. I give you a, a guarantee. Listen. Your obedience is what judges the devil. Obedience. Obedience. Oh, I feel the anointing of the spirit. I'll hurry up so that we will pray. Brothers and sisters, obedience. Obedience. We are going to look at one case study and then we'll support you with a few. Isaiah 51, please, quickly. One and two. Let's hurry up. Isaiah 51. Let's look at a man who from the Bible is called the epitome of faith. Isaiah 51. Hallelujah, verse 2. Everyone read. It says, look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone and blessed him and I increased him. That means God is giving you a case study. He said, now that you know what faith is, look at a biblical portrait. Understudy his life and you will find therein the keys. So let's study Abraham. Genesis 22. Quickly please. Our first case study is Abraham. How did God turn an idol worshiper? A mediocre in a small land called the awe of the Chaldeans. How did he become so prosperous? How did he become the father of faith? Hallelujah. Verse 2. It says, and he said, watch this. Okay, let's go to 12, verse 1 and 2, then we'll come back to 22. Genesis 12 from verse 1 and 2. The Bible, do you know that the person who was supposed to carry this, this fatherly mantle was his father, Terah? It was not Abraham. Terah missed it through disobedience. And the Bible says, now the Lord had said unto Abraham, get thee out of what? Are you seeing now? So we see that an instruction came 
What was the instruction? Get out. Don't ask questions. Just move. He says, get thee out of thy country from thy kindred father's house unto a land that I will show you. He said, if you do this, here's the result. I will make of thee. Many times we cut the part of the scripture and just start claiming, I will. no, there was an instruction. Faith is a response to an instruction. Hmm. And I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Next verse. Verse 3 now. Help us media. In Jesus name. Please walk together. We have to really rush. Okay, no problem. And then he finished all the blessings. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee and in thee shall the families of the earth be blessed. When will that happen? When will that happen? What was the first instruction? Get out. Abraham would have remained there and he would have died an idol worshiper at the all, at all of the Chaldeans. He got up and began to move. Go to verse 13. Chapter 13, sorry. Chapter 13, not. Chapter 13 from verse 1. And Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot went with him into the south. Abraham took a step and he started moving. Lord said, I'm going with you. For joining in the obedience alone, the man became blessed. Are you getting me now? Lot was not part of the covenant. Like Ruth held on to who? Naomi. She was not supposed to be part of the lineage. She said, no way. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, prophet, thank you. I'm, I'm leaving. Ruth said, no way. Your obedience is my... Whatever you do, I will do. 22 verse 1. Here was a test. The instruction was going to come for that promise to become real. At this point, Abraham had begun to experience some, some kinds of things. Liftings and all of that. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt. The word tempt there is test. Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am, verse 2. And he said, What? Take your son. We are understanding Abraham. Abraham did not just carry Isaac. He would have slaughtered his son for nothing with no blessing attached. You move as instructed, not as you wish. Either instructed by the voice of the spirit or the principles of the word. It's still the same. We have been taking steps out of our wishes and not out of the voice of God. It says, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moria, and offer him there as a bond offering upon one of the mountains, which I'll show you. Verse 3, may that be your testimony. Read the first line. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Everybody say prompt obedience. Delayed disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience in a measure. When God speaks to you, stand up. The moment you sit down there, that grace gets exhausted. And you find out you no longer can stand up. God told you to sow the seed. At that point, because it was in the place of prayer, you could do it. He said, wait, later on. When you came, you now calculated how much? 120. Kai! What did I hear like this? In the morning, you even said it's even 200 I'll give. But something has happened. See that? Or go and lay your hands on the woman in Shika. And you say, in the name of Jesus, I'm going. I know that they are used to seeing me just as a brother. But I'm going as instructed. And later on, you just say, let me quickly just go and greet uh, Benga. And see whether he has prepared lunch. After the lunch and everything, you get up and your mind starts telling you, you self, they have already called you stupid even before you behave stupid. Now, by the time you go to the hospital, what if they drive you? What if something happens to the car? I say, oh Lord, I'll just intercede. After all, it's, it will soon be time for prayers. You see, what, the, the beauty of grace is you take advantage of it immediately. The grace for obedience must be maximized promptly. He rose up early. There is a reason why the Bible tells us that. Remember, we're understudying Abraham. He rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and so on and so on and so forth. Uh, 
Let's go to verse 5. Verse 5. Okay, verse 7. He said, and Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father and said, my father, and he said, here I am. He said, behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb? The son didn't know he was the lamb. Next verse, please. Let's hurry up. And Abraham said, my God shall provide a lamb for his bond offering. So they went up together. Verse 9. And they came to a place which God had done this and that and that, and he bound Isaac. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth. Makalabo kataya. His obedience was about to be complete. Do you know if he did not live that night, everything he has done is multiplied by zero. It's painful when you start your obedience and stop. You've paid too much price. Why don't you finish it and, and commit God's integrity? Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Verse 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, lay not thy hand on the lad, neither do thou anything to him. He said, for now. See that? For when? Not when you left your house. Not when you were at the base of the mountain. For now. I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son. In other words, you obeyed me even unto death. The blessing follows. 13. And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and beheld a ram caught by the thorns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it at a bond offering instead of his son. 14. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. Are you seeing that now? Jehovah Jireh, you are singing it. Jehovah Jireh. Uh -uh. Don't just sing. What did he do that made that a revelation? My God shall supply all my needs. True. According to his riches in glory. But according to your obedience. To the instructions that will bring that riches. 15. And the angel of the Lord called out of Abraham. Called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. And said by myself. Come on now. This is God stepping in. When your equation is complete. Satan was not mentioned here. It was a deal between God and he said by myself. I have sworn. Because thou hast done. Done, not said, not confessed. Oh, I will kill Isaac in the name of Jesus. Isaac, you are dead. In fact, it's not that you are dying, you are dead. It's nonsense if there is no obedience. He said, and has not withheld thy son. 17. He said that in blessing, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply you. As the uh, uh, thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sun which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall what? Possess the gates of thy enemy. Please, I want you to make up your mind beginning from today that obedience will become the watchword of your life. This is Bible faith. Obedience. In Joshua chapter 6, just write it, I will not need to go there. The walls of Jericho. I want to show you. In fact, when you go to Hebrews 11, the Bible begins to give us the archives of men who did exploit with what we know called faith. And you find out that for all of them, there may be variations here and there, but one common thing is that they all took steps when a word came. They took steps. Jericho. In Joshua chapter 1, the Lord began to speak to Joshua. He said, as I was with my servant Moses, so I will be with you. Right? He said, only don't be afraid, be courageous, and so on and so forth. And, and you know, he looked at all of them. Now, watch this. God had told him he had given him Jericho. But if they just went, do you know they would have killed them? Please, learn this. Never obey. Just try to obey without prayer. Involve God. You will get the unique instruction. That's where the power lies in the word, in the instruction. Hallelujah. When Joshua went to pray in the night, what happened? The strategy was revealed to him. So on one side, you will take Jericho, but there is a strategy. It's a strategy that was never used in the Bible for anything again. It came as a rema. And he told him, he said, walk around. That's the strategy. You walk around today and it may not walk until it is a rema. But he walked around. Seven times, right? And on the seventh day, he went seven times and he said, now, 
Tehillah. Let there be a shout. That was a strategy. Other times, he told Jehoshaphat, he said, put the worshippers in front and let them begin to sing and say you are good and your mercies endure forever. That's the strategy. For you, your strategy may be come for counseling. God can tell you there is an anointing you will receive and it will change your life. Write your name for counseling. Even if there is nothing, just come. That's a strategy. For someone else, the Lord will say, go on a three-day fast. In the three-day fast, I will speak to you and you will catch a light. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you see that many of the things we call faith is not faith. It's not faith. It's just metaphysics. The widow in Zarephath, 1 Kings 17 from verse 7 to 16. Just write it, will not turn there for time's sake. Remember what happened. God commanded Elijah to go to Zarephath. There he will meet a widow. And watch this. He came and he met a woman in a state of lack and insufficiency. She needed to put her faith to work. But she could not put her faith to work until a word would come. And the prophet said, bring me water. The woman would have said, water for what? Water for what? And she took the water and as she was bringing it, he said, also bring me a morsel of bread. And she said, honestly, sir, this instruction is so much. He said, just do this. And the Bible says when she obeyed, her faith was released and she saw the supply. Are you seeing in scripture that all through the hallmark of faith is obedience? In my opinion, there is one word for faith, obedience. That's it. One word, obedience. If you do not obey the word, forget about the manifestation. When we're about to start Koinonia, I went to the Lord because the Lord had shown me in a vision. But where I saw in a vision, I could not relate with any physical place. And then I was, my mind had a lot of options here and there. But I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, I know that you are able to do this. All I need is a strategy. And I was praying, praying in the spirit. Just lying down and worshiping. And all of a sudden, I had CGC. The Lord spoke to me. And I said, Lord, I don't even know the people here. How are we going to get access to the place? And the Lord told me, I've gone before you. You see, you don't need to do anything. Just stay there. The word has come. And see where we are today. The product of faith. It will work any day. It will work any time. One time I was praying and I said, Lord, how do we do now? There are sick people and your people need to be equipped. And the Lord said, turn the last Friday of every month to become a special time to minister to the people. When the counseling was getting too much, every day I said, Lord, what is, what is this strategy? And first we had moved to Saturday. And then the Lord helped us to arrive. Who does counseling on Monday by 11 o'clock? Does that make sense to you? That's what God said. Look, brothers and sisters, if he speaks, start moving. Let your mind understand later on. Are you getting what I'm saying? Look at Jesus. I love Jesus. Jesus looks at a man who is blind. Sir, I am blind. And then Jesus makes mud. Right? Puts in his eyes and says, go and wash. Go and wash. Go and wash. I'm blind. If I could see, would I come to you? They let me. He didn't say, neighbors, take him to go and wash. He said, find your way there. Same thing Elisha told Naaman. Go and bath. See? You can choose to be arrogant about it or you can humble yourself and enter that water seven times and change your story. Naaman said, but there no rivers. The, the, the servant said, I'm walking with you. Soon I will leave you Please, you better be healed so that this thing will be better for us. You are a liability to me, this and that and that. Go and bath. And he went, watch this. He went and started obeying, but nothing happened till his obedience was complete. Six times he would have gotten up and just gone with mud like a fool. A man who brought victory. Right? He would have just moved and would say, Ah, Captain, where are you from? He said, What well, one stupid prophet? gave me an instruction. After six times I said, come on, my pride will not allow me. Many of you started obeying. One step to see the hand of God, the devil brought you back. And look, nothing happened. One step. Some of you came for miracle service, for instance. 
And we said, in the name of Jesus, you shout that name, Jesus. And you just stood and said, I beg, Jerry. People were just shouting like fools and you were there. And said, ah, everybody was getting blessed, getting healed. Instructions. Instructions. The secret of true faith. When you get that word, obey. The truth is we have not been obedient enough. And this is why we've not been seeing it. Look at the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus took the bread, blessed it, and did what? The bread did not multiply in the hands of Jesus. Did it? No, sir. He gave them. He said, go and start sharing. Go and start sharing. Look at the 10 lepers. He told them, he said, go and show yourself to the priest. And they went at that word. The Bible said, as they went not before as they went he says this sign shall follow not go before you have to take steps a miracle always comes or the miracle always comes after the instruction or condition is met never forget this the miracle always comes after the instruction has been obeyed fully Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your ways. Oh, oh, yes, Lord. I will obey. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your ways. Four is defined as the action you take. Right, we're concluding. Faith is defined as the action you take based on your conviction of God's word and in line with the instructions required by God. Right. Faith is the action you take not the desire to act the very action you take based on your conviction of God's word and in line with the conditions or instructions required by God if you do that you have manifested what the Bible calls Bible faith otherwise you will just be playing games and talking games I told the Lord, whatever you demand of me, I will do. I was in Abuja and um, one of my very nice shoes that I love, I was polishing the thing to package it and the Lord told me, this shoe goes for so, so, so person. Someone sowed a very major seed into my life and as soon as I received it, God said, now you are an usher, pass it to so, so, so person. Years ago, I would have cried, but I've grown. Mm. Because every time his instruction comes, that's my status changing. That's it changing. Hallelujah. Last year, when we were starting Koinonia, the Lord said we should carry all the seed in the house and sow everything. Everything. The whole money. I told the finance department, I said the Lord has given an instruction. Pack everything. If God has told you you will marry a man of God, start praying for grace. Don't just say when. Pray for grace. Because you are, the man himself is, is enough to be a ministry for you. A true man of God is strange. Right? You wake up and see a man roaming like a zombie in your room. Speak, Lord, I'm listening. Honey, what's going on? I'm okay, it's alright. And you are wondering whether you are the one who is going as a sacrifice or not. Listen, you will never receive breakthrough beyond the level of your last obedience. Never, never, never. Don't reject the instructions of God. Every time you search the Bible, look for conditions, not just promises alone. What are the conditions tied to them? Hallelujah. I sowed that seed and in less than two hours more than 1,000% of that seed came into my life. 
Hallelujah. Crazy instructions that God has given me. Crazy instructions. I remember when I traveled to Canaan land as the instruction of the Lord. I went with a seed and I went there when I was done outside in the public, not in one small corner. The Lord told me, go on your knees on that ground. And I went down there. I've shared the story. You know about it. I've shared with you how the Lord instructed me to give everything. Everything. Hallelujah. I carried my Isaac. Dragged it into the church. And came and placed it on the altar like a fool. Don't want any man's glory until you can obey the instructions he obeyed. What you need to pray for is Lord grace. There was a time the Lord instructed me. I locked myself for three days non-stop. My eyes did not see the sun. Did not see the sun. Because the Lord said so. No sun, no food, no nothing. The only thing that I did was to take my bath. And that was because the bathroom was inside the room where I stayed. No nothing. Are you willing to obey? If ye be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Hallelujah. I told you about how I trekked from the roundabout in PZ. Right? At the instruction of the Lord. The roundabout in PZ. I trekked to aviation. Praying in tongues. I take this city. The keys of this city is given unto me. Don't you sit down and see people coming and think it's just because I'm a young man. It's not charm. When you obey him, his integrity is committed. Who is God speaking to tonight? Stop grumbling and complaining. Cry and say, Lord, what is the word for the next level? Because if he gives you that word, you will rise to the next Hallelujah. I remember someone who one time, his father was sick. And he played an instrument for from night the lord gave him an instruction to play an instrument from about 10 till about 6 in the morning he said just play that instrument non-stop and that guy was worshiping by the morning the father was healed look at me the arm of the lord is not too short koinonia are you hearing me there are pastors there are people we like miracles but we hate instructions we hate instructions my life moves at the pace of the instructions of the Lord. Instructions of the Lord. I think it was yesterday or day before yesterday, I saw one suit that I like, new suit, they just sold it to me. And the Lord showed me the face of someone in protocol. Ah! I said, oh God, this is going. I called him immediately. I said, where are you? I said, come quickly. This is for you. And he came and I gave him a surprise. I said, bye-bye, before any unbelief will enter and I'll collect my team back. Go. I love you, Jesus. That was from the Spirit. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Oh, it takes faith to move mountains, brothers and sisters. I love you, Jesus. There is no instruction I will not obey. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Listen. It says through faith they subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They shut the mouths of lions. He said, what more can I say? For time will fail me to speak to you about Gideon and Barak and Jephthah. Ordinary men who obey God to the latter. Sister, when you obey God, that man must come. It doesn't matter where he is. Forget about witches and wizards. Concentrate on your obedience. Concentrate. There are some of you, God told you, Drag your family members and bring them here. The word came with the grace for it to happen. You say, Master, we have toiled all night. There are times God can use a man to speak to you. 
They tell you, go and listen to relationship and family life. I have listened to it before. No, no. Remember, you are responding to a word. Don't forget. He may tell you to do what you have always done. But this time around, there is an anointing upon it. You will do it and see very seemingly crazy instructions. God can tell you, just sit down on these drums. And just be playing and clashing the cymbal and praying in tongues. Do it. Do it. If you are ashamed of men, forget about greatness. You will never carry certain levels of the anointing. I went for six hours in just standing at the Renhard Bonke Kuse because I was desperate. And, and I set my gaze on that man because there was something I wanted to land on me. I was not sitting down asking stupid questions that people ask when they go to places. Ah, this man, this white man, why is he wasting our time? Is there Rema or no Rema? That was not my, I was at my, my, my face was set like a flint. Brothers and sisters, listen. Wait, the financial prosperity series I'm about to preach, I truly believe it will cause a revolution. There are new things that the Lord has shown me that I put my hand on my head. I say, my goodness, Joshua Selman, where have you been? Your life must change. We're in the season of the rain. Obedience is the platform. Don't blame anybody. Take responsibility. There are only three prayer points tonight we are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray. Sorry about the time. We are really working on beating the time. But I want you to pray. Begin to thank God for the word tonight. Begin to thank him for the word tonight. It's time for new levels of grace. New fountains. New levels of impact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray. Prayer point number one. Lord, help me and give me a receptive spirit to hear your instructions and to see your conditions as demanded by scripture. Lift your voice. Please pray seriously. This is the time to pray and not walk around inside and outside. Let our spirits be open, O oh God, that as we study, may we see instructions. May we not just see promises, but conditions. Your level is changing, I tell you. Your level is changing, I tell you. God is not a man that you should lie. He's not the son of man that you should repent. Lord, I receive a receptive spirit. I receive a receptive spirit. I receive a receptive spirit. I'm receptive to your instruction. Hallelujah. Listen, there are conditions tied to you walking in divine health. There are conditions tied to influence and increase and honor. There are conditions tied to prosperity. There are conditions tied to longevity. Find out. We have preached these things. Our messages are full of these keys. Prayer point number two. Lord Jesus, speak to me. Speak to me. I'm ready to obey. Speak to me. Let your words supply grace. Reveal the strategy. Pray. Show me the key to the next level of breakthrough. 
to the next level of influence, to the next level of encounter, to the next level of the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number three. I want you to pray this with all your heart. Cry for a fresh supply of grace for prompt and complete obedience. Some of you, God has given you instructions. There are seeds to sow. There are places to go. There are tapes to listen to. There are encounters. There are retreats to have. You have not obeyed, so you will never see his glory. Lift your voice and cry. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. Hallelujah. Watch this. It is after you obey that you can now begin to confess. And then you can now sow a seed and tie a seed to it. Except if the sowing of the seed is the instruction. Or that if I'm believing God say for a house and I find out God gives me an instruction go and get an architectural design and see the kind of house you want that's an instruction don't sit down and start giving foolish arguments now I go and I say Lord I found what I wanted God will say go and estimate how much will it cost now you, you estimate and you say it will cost 15 million <laughs> you are sitting down all you have home and abroad is 500 naira forget about it and it, look the blessing is in the instruction it's not in what you have whether, you, you, whether it is 1,000 or 1 billion, it is still faith that will bring it. Hallelujah. And now you begin to pray. And while you pray, God will say, relax. He said, don't worry. Just relax. It will come as a seed. You have heard the word. You stand still. And you begin to prophesy. Or God will say, now go and sow a seed for it. Or you want to get married, for instance. And, and, and you are praying and you are thanking God you are saying Lord thank you for this and then you find out God gives you an instruction in the place of prayer maybe go and wash the plate go to one woman who is already married he may even be your friend he said just go on a Saturday and help them sweep and wash their plate that's the instruction if you are too ashamed to do it forget about marriage it may be crazy but go and do it after you have done that then you can now begin to prophesy and you can now connect with a seed and say, Lord, I sow a seed into this. And I speak. My marriage is coming. The man that God is bringing, like our sister said, is a blessed man. He's a godly man. Your obedience is complete. Something is wrong with your family. Your husband or your wife is misbehaving. And all of that. You don't sit there and say, me and you will enter the same trouser. What has entering the same trouser got to do with, with the solution? You don't need to enter the same trouser. You need a word from God. All these stupid cultural things that we put, we must enter the same trouser. And do what? Is it going to solve the problem? 
Get a word from God. Where you are confused, come for counseling. This is the situation. What do you think? What is the, what is the scriptural mystery? What is the principle that is responsible for the delivery of this? Right? That's why we pray. That's why we come here all the time. We are dispensing mysteries. As these mysteries are dispensed, it's falling on different people. You catch it and you walk with it. It has changed the lives of people from nothing. It has taken people to wherever they will go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Very fearful and touching testimony. A gentleman listen to my message he's been following my teachings and he's been listening to my messages and they are trusting god he's a real estate person he's trusting god for breakthroughs and all of that and then a miracle just happened to him within a short time they gave him 60 hectares of land to develop and sell his profit from that is 300 million he's a young man like me the word as if that will finish when i when i got to abuja he made sure every time i go to abuja he makes sure he's the one driving me around he said, I must drive you. The last time I went, he said they gave him another 40 hectares, making 100 hectares. What is it that God cannot do? Your obedience. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your obedience. Your obedience. Your obedience. I hear a lot of testimonies. Testimonies. You were, I think many of us have, have we've heard about the testimony. Of the woman who for eight years was barren, Selena's auntie or so. And this woman supernaturally, by acting the word of God, had triplets. They are all alive today. Triplets to recover for the eight years. What is it that God cannot do? Don't come with say right prayer requests. It's when you are here that you just scrabble in what is even your own. You are just playing games with God. That's why very few people get testimonies. Change your attitude from today. Let it not be Friday by five. You say it's time for koinonia. Be intentional about it. There are people who come in for miracle service. We all fast on Thursdays. But on Friday, they, they prepare. When I'm coming for koinonia, it's as if, do you know, you see me sit down sometimes here. My body is shaking. I'm just waiting for worship to finish. Testimonies, when people are shouting, you see, there's answer. I want to just dispense what God has brought. But there are people who just sit down. You bring a teaspoon and you want, you want to have an ocean of blessings. Hallelujah. You must be proficient. At your place of work, in ministry, in business, pay the price. Don't run around looking for cheap success. Don't run around looking for quick money. Don't run around trying to claim what you are not. I've said it and I will keep saying it till it burns into you. Don't try to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. There are so many people who look successful. Like the fig tree that Jesus saw. But when he came, he found no fruit in it. I've made up my mind that in my lifetime, every area the Lord wants to use me, I will be like a sword that has been sharpened at its finest. Hallelujah. A man of God, God wants to bless you. But there is no grace, no revelation. No, the personal contributions. You go for a meeting. A major conference and waste the time of the people talking nonsense and at the end of it they say uh, thank you for coming here's your honorarium may the Lord bless you and they will never invite you again never God open doors you close them by yourself let me tell you both in the church and in the secular environment the minimum standard is exceptional excellence minimum standard is God speaking to us you're a hairstylist Oh God, open the door for me. God is saying to wear. Make room for the blessing. Be proficient enough. Hallelujah. Please challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. There are many music ministers. You wrote a song. There is no standard to gauge the proficiency of the song. You to sing the song and hear what you wrote. Huh? And then, you see, the worst thing that can happen to you 
is to surround yourself with mediocres who are too ashamed to tell you the truth. You come on stage and sing and make a lot of blunders and when you step down, they say, Kai, Ken, ah, that song. And you say, really? You, you see how you are deceiving yourself? We, our standards are very small. So we, we feel a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment too fast because our standards are small. You're a man of God. You gauge yourself around with people who don't pray and are not serious. You lay hands on somebody and she falls down and you say emoji. Emoji compared to what? The day you go for a meeting, they bring a blind person. You pretend not to see the person. Praise the Lord. Oh, I have an apostolic. You go for a crusade, you see them. And you know the way, I love the way crusades are. They line the sick people. They are desperate. They say, man of God, there's somebody on the wheelchair here. Say, ah, did I ask you to bring the person out? Mastery. I love Jesus. Don't just think the Holy Ghost came upon him alone. The Bible says at age 12. Is that in your Bible? At age 12, Jesus sat down and began to articulate the writings of the prophets. The Pentateuch. This guy began to, he, he began to bombard the scribes and the Pharisees. What sort of boy is this? Don't waste the anointing. The anointing does not fall on nothing. The Bible makes us to understand in the building of the tabernacle, the glory of God never came until the tabernacle was built to specification. The last peg had to be put before they saw the glory of God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Excellence. Excellence in dressing. Excellence in your singing. Excellence as a student. Excellence as a worker. Excellence as a whatever it is you're doing. When people are clapping for you, if you don't run away from that place, you will soon die. Because the people who are clapping are only clapping out their frustration. Right? In a class where there are 100 students, and you write an exam, for instance, if the best student gets 11 over 100, if you do a speech and prize, who will take the first prize? It will be said he took first. Correct? But what grade did he get? Help me. So he can move around saying I'm the best student compared to what standard. Then the day you step out and meet others who are not joking. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. Kabbalah katayama. A workman who needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Pay attention to diligence. Pay attention to diligence. Don't stop clapping for yourself when it's not time to clap for yourself. Hallelujah. Raise the bar. Thank God you are a local champion. In your community you are the best. See the nations. If you don't make room for the nations, you will never be beyond the nations. That's why there are pastors that will never pastor more than 50 members. More than 100 members. More than 500 members. More than 1,000 members. Because the capacity, they have not made room for the blessing. Is God speaking to us please? Don't just get angry and be frowning at your boss and say this man is so wicked. This guy just got a job. In two months he's promoted him. Proficiency. Proficiency. Closely tied to that, I spoke about laziness. Oh, by the way, Proverbs 22 verse 29 says, See thou a man diligent in his business. It gives you an assurance. It says you will not stand before mean men. Average people. Once you are diligent, it will defy every other barrier and make sure you meet with the kings of that sphere of influence. I've met with people that ordinary my level in life would never qualify me to see them. Not even by accident. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Laziness. Proverbs 10 verse 4. Many young people in Nigeria are lazy. 
lazy, mentally lazy, spiritually lazy, physically lazy. We're in a hurry to show quick success. We're in a hurry to show that things are working. Life is not like that. The Lord put this in my heart to talk to us about it and I will. Proverbs, Proverbs what? 10 verse 4, who is there? Some of you are still at Exodus, Proverbs, Proverbs after Psalms. Proverbs 10 verse 4, it says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, a lazy person, no inertia. He becometh poor. The word poor there is not just financially poor. You become bankrupt in every area. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. I found a very good scripture for ministers. Romans 12 verse 11. Let's hurry up so we can have time. Romans 12 verse 11. Shiva la kura sibranya na bala. 12 verse 11. Are you there? Say amen. One to read. Not slothful in business fervent in spirit serving the Lord he said not slothful the word slothful there means laggy you are not, you are not giving life the kind of aggression it takes right he said not slothful in business diligent, fervent zealous in spirit serving the Lord so you want to serve the Lord you want to serve his body you must be competent Please hate average. Let me tell you something. As you are sitting down here, the number one thing that should happen to you this night is tell yourself the truth. I've tried, but compared to where God wants to take me, the journey is still far. It will help you to humble yourself. Whether they write Apostle Jakes, Bishop Jakes, right? It's an ugly scene. To see an incompetent person boasting is a very ugly scenario. My goal is that we we'll have the brightest of the brightest and the best of the best. The head of the head of um, technical is here. I went to pray for his office at the bio bio what biotech that biotech place. And when I went in, I looked at his office and I looked at everything. I said, wow. It's not about size. It's about content. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's about content. At least I know that there is a project that they are on now. Projects of, of hundreds of millions. Competence. When you become competent, let me tell you brothers and sisters. All of a sudden, where you are coming from will never matter. Jeroboam, the Bible says his mother was a widow. Meaning she did not have the opportunity to do much. But competence. Please, there are many of us here, it is your competence that will wipe the tears of your parents. They didn't go to school. They done their best. Don't sit down in the average there and keep forcing your mother, your father, the poor people doing their best rise up and change your status don't just sing it as a song is God speaking to anyone here I read the story of Joseph so that it will minister to us because many of us are young people Joseph was 30 years 30 years and as a matter of fact out of that 30 years about 12 to 30 of that 30 years was spent as a slave what is your excuse you are a keyboardist. You are the only one who claps for yourself when you play. And you are angry and say, oh Lord, open doors for me. You see, the, the problem is, God does not want to disgrace his name. Are you getting me? Because you are an object of praise. Everything that leaves you reveals the glory of God. It's called doxazo, a display of his glory. You must be competent. Competent. 
I always do this. Mike, play something. Play, just play anything on the keyboard. And um, listen. Did you know, did you know that what you just played is exactly what they are crying for in many churches? And they will find him and not even ask, what is it? Nobody will ask whatever and say, come, we are willing to pay you. Huh? And you are there pay, playing the things with your fingers and say, Lord, this church, I already see my destiny. No matter what you saw in your dream, I guarantee you, if you are not diligent, you won't enter into it. Praise the Lord. You are a doctor. The first person you gave an injection had problem. Second person had problem. Third problem. Before you blame demons, we're going to there will be deliverance here shortly. But I told you that the biggest problem of Africa is blaming demons. You can't take demons to court. You can't arrest them. We we like the fact that they are invisible entities. We excuse our failures. Everything demons. You woke up by nine, I know it's a spirit that, that stopped me. Ha, I planned for five. What happened? You are to go for a job interview by nine. By 8.30, you are strolling around carelessly. As if it's your place. As if you are the director. You are, the CEO that will interview you was there by seven. You stroll around, you came late and said, in the name of Jesus, lift up your head. Oh, ye gates. See that? The Bible says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience, when your obedience, when your own part of the equation is complete. Say, I refuse to be average. Say it, I refuse to be average. At least I'm better than him now. You see, that's the demonic attitude that keeps people as failures. They look around and say, eh, thank God, I'm not good, but at least I'm better than this sister. Even you, you know I'm better than you. God wants to lift his body and it does not take too long. But the greatest publicity is to remain in the secret place. Sharpen yourself. Become exceptional. The Bible says, and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance. When John appeared with uncanny accuracy, he knew that this was Jesus. He said, behold the lamb. Behold the lamb. He didn't mistake in Jesus for John the beloved. He didn't mistake him because he asked all the questions in the secret place. Gideon defeated the Midianites. He stayed and asked the question and made sure he was ready. Look at David. David looks at Goliath. And while others are chickening out, David comes. He ran to him. That's what competence does. It gives you confidence. When others are running away, you say, where is the challenge? They were going to hang all the magicians in the days of Daniel. The king said, by tomorrow, if you don't tell me my dream and the interpretation, just know you are dead. And Joseph said, um, I mean, Daniel said, allow me. And the Bible says in the night, the secret, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And when he got up, he said, oh king, this and that and that. And he was promoted instantly. Listen, brothers and sisters, contend for mastery. Contend for mastery. Those of us who are at work, contend for mastery. Don't be a liability to your place of work and expect promotion. It's not fair. Contend for mastery. And people will look for you. They will beg you. There are people who are paid millions of dollars to speak for one hour. Dr. Miles Munro, one of my greatest mentors, died last year. He wrote about 54 books and about 49 or so of them were bestsellers. It wasn't just because he was anointed. He consulted for government. $10,000 per hour. Even if it's just to look at your face. Competence. 
Alléluia. I'm a builder, I'm a builder. You build a house as if the ground is falling. Why should they invite you again? Right? They send you to go and buy something. You buy something substandard. You don't even know what is the real thing. Refuse incompetence. You trust God to take you to the area of worship. Challenge. Is this not the issue of competition? This is the issue of standing out to give God room so that you will shine like the stars. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing. So that you will be called blameless and pure children of the most high and you will shine like the stars as you hold forth the word of life be competent be competent no room for laziness say amen so you must gain mastery mastery attracts people across significant spheres of influence once you have mastery in an area, it will attract significant people in that area. I receive phone calls and text messages and I'm amazed at certain people who call me. They do not even know that they are the people that I have desired to see myself. And they call me. Hello, sir. How are you? Ah. I said, let me quickly humble myself. Fine, sir. I am so, 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 and so. Wow, it's my pleasure. Please, how can I see you? Whatever it is to take you, we can send a driver to come and pick you. This is urgent. Ah! Status is changing. It's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. It's no more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Let me tell you something. Success is not what compels attention. Consistent success is what compels attention. Sooner or later, your grace will be needed. The darkness in the world is too much for you to be ignored if you pay your price. Because not everybody is ready to be competent. So when you become exceptional, forget about the criticism for now. With time, people will swallow their words and look for you. I assure you, the same boss that said over my dead body will be alive and will be the one to shake you and say we are partners in progress. By the time his company knows dives, he will find you for sure. Is God speaking to anyone here? Whatever your hand findeth to do, that's what my Bible says. It said, do it with all your might. Give it the best. Give it the best. I refuse mediocrity in my life. I refuse mediocrity. I will sharpen the sword of ministry. I will make sure I am exceptional. To deliver what is season to God's people. The sick will be healed. The body will be guided. Whatever quota I have been anointed. And have been graced. I will do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best, my very best. I'll do my best. So could it be that the reason why God has not announced you, listen, could it be that the reason why God has not announced you is because he does not want you to blow that opportunity? God is saying prepare. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Say it, prepare. That's the word of the Lord for now. Prepare. Prepare. See the testimony of our brother Aaron. One side he's leaving a job, another job is coming. A federal government job. We're going to talk about the anointing. But brothers and sisters, let us not deceive ourselves. God will judge me if I don't tell you the truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The anointing is only active. When it comes upon a refined gift, when God anoints your grace, when God anoints your ability, you become a sign and a wonder. That takes me to the next thing I'll talk about very briefly. The anointing. You are ready for the anointing among other things when you refine your gifts, when you refine your abilities. 
when you refine it, then you are ready for the anointing. Sharpen yourself. Sharpen yourself. And then you are ready for the anointing. The fire never fell until there was a sacrifice upon the altar. The fire does not just fall. The anointing falls when you are prepared, when you are ready, then you become relevant. 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 I refuse to be relegated and I refuse you and forbid you from being relegated. Not just because you are a Christian, but because you do not have what to offer. Hallelujah. My younger brother, very brilliant gentleman. When he graduated, a job was not forthcoming and I looked at him. I told him, young man, just keep sharpening your ability. You are too gifted to be ignored. It's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. For one year, that guy, very intelligent young man, but he committed his best. He gave his all. He was very, very serious. He was getting a job that they were paying him 5000 I told him, no problem. Stay there. Just be serious. He became exceptional. If he did not come for work, they would know. And all of a sudden, it was like a dream. He was called to become a lecturer in University of Joss. He's a lecturer right now. No devil stopped it. No devil stopped it. Everybody say competence. When they called him and he spoke to them, they knew this was a bright material. If you are called, if the kings that are to lift you call on you right now, will you enter the palace and go back to the prison? Or will you enter the palace and shut the door of the prison forever? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh God, connect me to that person. Connect me to that ministry. Give me an opportunity to preach in that bigger platform. And God is saying, are you prepared? As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to bless you. But have you done your work? Are you prepared? I vowed a vow in my life. I will never enter the presence of greatness and go back to my old level. If I step into any atmosphere of greatness, I am prepared in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. When your preparation is complete, then you are ready for the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed that Jesus Christ after he spent time learning the, the, the Pentateuch, and prepared himself getting an exact blueprint of his assignment the bible says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and then together his diligence and the anointing of the holy spirit the bible says he went about doing good became invincible and healing all that were oppressed of the devil he said, I have found David, my servant, Psalm 89 verse 20, downwards. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. I had to find him. I found David since, but he had not done his work. Now I've found my servant and with my holy oil have anointed him. Hallelujah. A man in the construction of the tabernacle, the architect of that construction, he was called Bezalel. The Bible says he was a man who was gifted in craftsmanship. And the anointing of the spirit came. Look, let me tell you, when God anoints your grace, he will command men to hear you. And no, even if you are living in a cave, you become a city that is set on a hill that cannot, cannot. You spend your time praying and studying the word and opening up yourself and making yourself available. Then that unction will come upon you. It comes in a heavy way that nobody will deny the hand of God upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a powerful thing to see someone who has done his assignment and is carrying the unction of the spirit. He becomes undeniable, invincible. No matter what you say about that person, the world is too dark. For the, that grace to be ignored. I show you a key. God wants you great. God wants you blessed. For many of us in this miracle service, this is the key to the next dimension. I don't just want us to say it is, 
it's raining, raining, let it rain and so on and so forth. No. Hallelujah. Grace. And I salute so many people who left various places to come tonight because it is part of your play your own part. And tonight grace will come upon you and it will distinguish you. Like Saul, you will go back and they will say, ah, ah is Saul also one of the prophets? When did you enter this dimension? Favor is when preparation meets opportunity. It's not magical. It's a formula. And God is calling us. Wipe the tears of your family. Forget about the challenges of now. That's why we are here. To address it. But above and beyond that, you must make up your mind, brothers and sisters, that something must be different about my life. Make up your mind that by next month's miracle service, I'm coming a new person. I'm coming a better person. Your phone that used to be on silent, by March, calls are coming every day. You wake up with calls and text messages. Men are, are placing demands on the grace, willing to pay any amount, job or no job. There are people who are not working, but they are getting the salary of CEOs because people will pay for your gift. Let me tell you, it says buy the truth. God put a price tag on the truth. And if you have the truth, men will buy the truth. They will pay you. And they will call it a privilege. Is God speaking to someone here? And don't say, I didn't go to school. Or I didn't have the opportunity. I cannot speak English. No, no, no. None of those things. Master whatever God has given you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? master whatever he has given you and tonight an anointing comes on it and I send you like the foxes of Samson and you will step in and begin to do wonders the pride of every true leader is not that he becomes a superstar I've said it again and again that true leadership the hallmark of leadership is that you are able to influence followers to also become leaders not maintain followers Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shortly before we rise, I want you to pray as you are seated. You know the area in your life God has been wanting to bless you. But the truth is your incompetence has limited him. Inside and outside, no matter how far, lift your voice and talk to your maker. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. This music ministry... Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Competence. Exceptional competence. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of being a mediocre. I'm tired of my life looking as if you are not mighty. I'm tired of joining the crowd in mediocrity. In this season of the rain, I'm challenging myself. Come on, pray, young and old. It's time for a new season. I arise and I shine for my light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Never will I be termed forgotten. But I will be called Pula. Pula. The land of delight. I reject mediocrity in business. Mediocrity in ministry. As a student, I reject mediocrity. I challenge laziness. Pray. As a worker, I am the best staff. I am an envoy. Pray. I break ordinary standards. I refuse mediocrity. Pray. As a minister of the gospel, I contend for grace. I stop joining the crowd in mediocrity. Go ahead and pray. As a businessman, I become exceptional. 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 I'm an ambassador. I represent the parliament of heaven. And I represent God at the highest level of excellence. Pray, 
koinonia. As you cry upon him, he grants you grace. Lord, you want to change our stories in this season. We make room. We make room. We make room. We make room. We reject the spirit of laziness. Time and chance happen to them all. Opportunity and seasons come to them all. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray this prayer point. You're going to ask God for grace. Mention the areas where you need God to grant you grace to be competent. There are books you will need to buy. There are seminars you will need to attend. There are mentors you will need to find. Whatever it will take to be like an axe that has been sharpened. Go ahead and pray. I receive that grace. Grace for competence exceptional competence don't let any man preach you against competence incompetence will make you poor incompetence will make you angry incompetence will make you a failure incompetence will make you average I must stand out. I must stand out. In my generation, I must stand out. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Listen, I'd like you to pray. Pray for grace to be outstanding. Lift your voice. Grace to be outstanding. Forget about the pain of today. The Bible says for our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Pray. While we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. The closed door is subject to change. When you are competent, nations will celebrate you. Without bias, they will celebrate you. They will demand your grace. They will pay for it. the Lord. So I want you to have this at the back of your mind today. Go back and buy the books you need to buy. Go and sell those shoes and buy books. Are you getting it? He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Stop living a fake life. Go and pack those materials, sell them and buy what will give you relevance. The Bible speaks about the prophet Samuel. He said the word of the Lord did not fall in his mouth. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Don't applaud yourself when you don't have to. Be competent and the world will applaud you. And you will not be ashamed of it. You will not be ashamed to stand before the platforms he gives you. Because you know that you have, you have done your assignment. You will always be ashamed. You will always envy successful people. You will always hate them when you remain a mediocre. But when you rise, you become colleagues in progress. You become partners in progress. You celebrate them because you have become colleagues. Hallelujah. Now to the business of the night. I want us to pray. The Lord is going to do a quick walk in this place. There are mighty healings and deliverances. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, 
My time for a visitation has come. Pray from the depth of your heart. Inside and outside. No matter how far you are, pray. Hallelujah. Insist that you must be touched this night. Insist that something must change. It doesn't take time. It just takes one encounter. You came with a lot of challenges. Don't sit down and waste your time. Make sure you cry unto God. Tell the Lord exactly what you want tonight. Go ahead. Please speak to the Lord, especially for those standing outside. Make sure you talk to him. I feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear We see the rain of your love We feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear So let it rain let it rain Would you open The floodgates of heaven Let it rain Let it rain Open hallelujah hallelujah listen i don't care what the issue is let your faith rise right now are you hearing what i'm saying i see sick people all around inside and outside and i see all kinds of people but i want you to know tonight that the god of wonders is still in this place so let hope rise Darkness trembles in your holy light. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everyone. Hallelujah. Listen. Tonight there is an unusual anointing upon me. I began to sense this right from home. There will be massive deliverance right now. Massive deliverance. There are people who have come. There are families that have come from far and near. Hallelujah. And every challenge, every power of darkness. My Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Participate. Listen. We are going to shout that name. Please don't you think it's just a chorus or it's a formula. There is an anointing with it. Because it's a name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. You're going to shout that name. 
at the count of three as you shout that name there will be all kinds of deliverances many of you you are standing in not just for yourself but for your family members all kinds of spirits and spells attempting to bring back what Jesus died for in the name of Jesus I speak to the realm of the spirit and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every foul devil every covenant every spell at the count of three let the fire of God separate those people right now one two three shake it those devils I command those forces in the name of Jesus I cast out those devils bring them out shake it the fire is falling on witchcraft outside the fire is falling every power that is not of God I send the rod of judgment every power that is not of God everyone standing upon this crown I come with an apostolic anointing in the name of Jesus Satan let God's people go there's no hiding place for the power of God is everywhere there is no hiding place not for witchcraft there is no hiding place I command judgment let the angels of the living God move across this congregation and break chains hallelujah I see a lot of chains lift your hands again I see chains so many chains Break chains. Break. Break chains. Break. Listen, some of you, this chains has lasted for years and decades. I don't care how long it has been. As you shout that name again, I see many people outside. You will know the chain has broken. That embargo over your family. You will know it when it happens because I hear sounds of change at the count of three. Shout that name again with all your might and I command that as they shout, may those chains break. One, two, three. Chains of stagnation. Chains. Break Hear me, listen. Listen. I guarantee you, not one person standing on this ground will go back with the chains holding you. 
I'm speaking to the powers. They know the voice of God. This is the season of the rain. This is the season of the rain. And in the name of Jesus, now over families, any family under the sound of my voice, you have suffered mysteriously. I come in the name of the Lord whose I am and I command judgment upon the powers of darkness. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Right families. Release the destinies of families. See the For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy put to an end annihilate it says son of man what yes thou Zechariah 1 18 it says four horns these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah against Israel and against Jerusalem so that no man will lift up his head he said but I have sent four carpenters and they will terrorize those horns we have come tonight to terrorize the power of darkness they must let you go after nine plagues pharaoh refused to let them go he said yet will i send one more plague upon pharaoh and egypt and after that he will let you go jesus paid the price in full completely there is no reason why the devil should tie you down when he was on the cross he said it is finished and we are here to enforce that which that fatigued in the name of Jesus, for those in front here, they represent families. I don't care what kinds of spirits or entities. At the count of three, you will let God's people go and release their families. No matter how long the blood of Jesus annihilates the legal hold you have. I don't care what covenant you have. In the name of Jesus, therefore I speak to every foul spirit. That at the count of three, you let them go never to return. Right now in the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Out you go. Out you go. Out you go. Never to return. Out you go. By the ministry of the blood. By the ministry of the blood. I cost you. By the ministry of the blood, release the families, release their finances, release their destinies. Go now, go now. I compel you by the blood of Jesus. That blood opens the gates of captivity. That blood opens that gate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every family under bondage free. I don't care how long the doors have been closed. We open it now. You will begin to experience unlimited breakthroughs. Hallelujah. Who is Stephanie? Stephanie. I hear a name Stephanie. You are wearing a like orange veil. Do we have somebody like that? Is it an orange veil or something? Stephanie. Yeah. Bring that woman. That lady or that woman, whoever. Just let them win. Okay, young lady. This is the spirit of death. Bring her. Lay hands on her stomach. I curse that spirit. Every spirit of infirmity. Out! Now! 
labor alone, she will rise up completely healed. Stephanie, Stephanie, I still hear the name. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a family in a vision. We have to hurry up. We really want to finish fast. So, I'm seeing a family. There is a family that came here. I'm seeing four people. Like, is it four children or something? A family. Do we have someone like that? Please, if, if it's yours, if it's your case or it looks like your own, just signify and let's know if there is none, we can move forward. Because this is what the Lord is showing me. I'm seeing a family. It's like four children. They are here. They came here. Shut up. Is it you? You are the one. Where are the people? Where are your children? Come. Why are you sitting back? Come. Do you know that there is a call of God upon the family? Not just your mother, but upon the family. And it's a prophetic call. It's a prophetic call. Right? It's not only your mother. I didn't, I'm, I'm, I don't know you people. But the hand of God is going to come upon you. It's a mighty anointing of the spirit. It will come upon you. Are you part of the family? Huh? You are related. You are what? You are on your own. Okay, please, until I call you, but come. Come and stand since you have come. For the Lord is going to bring restoration. This is the first thing that will happen. Mark it. Restoration. Number two. What do you do? the Lord is going to lift you why am I seeing a ring in your hand I'm not seeing a physical ring but it's in the spirit I'm seeing a ring your wedding bells are ringing are you married huh this is what I'm <laughs> we don't feel embarrassed we are a family marriage is not a bad thing Abi mommy is it a bad thing it's not a bad thing because there is nobody and you are wondering, this is what you are thinking in your heart. Where is the person? Listen, he said, We see the fire. We see the fire. We see the wood. Where is the lamb? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. The same word that comes. Listen, listen, my dear, you don't know me. I'm not a herbalist. Are you getting my point? When the Lord brings a word, he will make it happen. My brother. This year you will hold finances that will make you afraid. Come, what do you do? What does what what do you do? Huh? That's not it at all. This one is just for generosity, just to prepare you. God is going to open a strange opportunity for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? It's a strange opportunity. If you people have ever doubted whether the hand of God is upon your mother, I'm telling you, she's not fake. I'm saying it now because they have been talking about this woman she sees and people have been saying she's fake I'm saying if this woman is fake she will not enter this place I guarantee you except I'm not a man of God please she's not fake what she needs is is the, an, an accurate alignment through the word of God so that her prophetic vistas will be sharpened she has a lot of prophetic insight but the word level is very low so there is dwindling that stability in the spirit is not there that's all this mama is not fake because i'm seeing her walking in a prophetic and a healing anointing very powerfully come madam come let's pray to the king you have taken all the glory you have taken hold hands both of you I show you a mystery. Madila Katabarata. Jembra Mato Zatali Kaparando Skolapaya. Mambro no supaya. One will chase a thousand, but two will chase ten thousand. Confirm your word right now, oh God, as I speak. There is a transference of graces right now happening between both of you. It's a drinking together. 
is a happy anointing that is coming because you will also step into a strong evangelical and prophetic anointing drink of that wine right now in the name of Jesus Christ don't be afraid to help her you won't be with her forever but the Lord is going to lift you in due season and you will begin to see in a strange way may the Lord bless you may he anoint you in the name of Jesus Christ I break the embargo of darkness over the family come you're a great lady but the devil wants to oppress your life hold my hands just hold my hands mm, for he is here light shines in the darkness you must release her let her go now I'm seeing an old woman's face but in the name of Jesus I declare you step into strange dimensions of grace I command deliverance to you right now in the name of Jesus God bless you it's all right I bless this family the Lord changes your story you will return with dramatic testimonies in Jesus name nay we I'm hearing a name of a place there is there's nay we I know it's an evil place right there is there is a there is somebody I, I think a lady or a guy or somebody from that place nay we who is that please if it's your case whether you are outside just make your way so that you don't waste our time please there are so many other people come mama she's your mother what's wrong with her is this working please help us she's having problem with her legs she's having problem with her legs. knee problems her legs, oh. her legs. Her arthritis I don't know. you don't know yes. you I love god very well. Very well. Yeah? Very well. Well enough to marry a man of God? Yes. Because that's your husband. He's a man of God. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know how, madam. <laughs> See mommy laughing. <laughs> mommy, come. What is wrong with her leg, please? Let's, let's not. Well, it has been disturbing her for some time now. How long? Like? Up to two years now. I feel a swoon in my waist by my left leg, fish ground. I used to feel serious pain. Don't, don't, don't cry, it's okay. Mama, look at me. You came here because you believe in Jesus. Yes. Look at me, just look at me. Say Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. I receive healing. I receive healing. Pain. Pain. Go. Go now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, you believe Jesus? I believe Jesus. Run up here. Come. Just come. Forget about the legs. Come. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. Look. Lord, praise the Lord. I came to this program today. I'm no more feeling the pain. I even I went Check. to hospital today. My come on, give Jesus. Oh, to break every chain, break every chain. Let's go. Come. Where are you from? Cross River. Huh? Cross River. You are serious about your love for God, right? Yes. Because you are going to marry a man of God. Yes, I am. You, are, you know it now. Yes. What I'm saying, you have known it. I'm just confirming to you. Thank you, Jesus. Is it a lie? They just say I'm lying. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies know a lot of things. They just hide it. I'm not endorsing your dream and your vision. No, I don't know what you saw. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that, truly, truly, the grace and the spirit upon your mother is upon you because your mother is a good woman. Mama, tell me one thing you want God to do in your family. I want my children to serve God. I want all of them to serve God. Father, stretch your hands towards this family, everybody. What a request. Not for money. Many of you will ask for money. I will give me money sharp, sharp. In the name of Jesus, you are the son. Where are the rest? You are the only one. Just two of you. Yes, and I have since graduated. 
I thank God for what God has been doing in my life. I thank God. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands and pray for this family. Eleven children. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. I bless this family. Let doors of prosperity be open. Let doors of advancement be open. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Celebrate Jesus for Mama's miracle. Rejoice with them and you will have your own testimony. Hallelujah. Who brought this person? Help us now. Where are the people? Huh? I'm the one. It's okay, Mama. Relax. What is the situation? What is it? He can't walk. What happened to him? It's okay. What happened to him? Look at me. How are you? Can you talk? What happened to you? Uh, I felt sick last year October when they took me to the hospital. Oh, when for so many examinations. And they say it's cancer. And when they refer me to Shika here. They said you have cancer. Yes. Sir. So right now you have cancer. Yes, so they've left you to the, die. Yes, sir. Cuffed the, of your legs. Yes, sir. I cannot even walk, sir. You can eh? I can't walk, sir. Since when? Since when did he stop walking? Last month. You believe that the power of God is going to set you free? Yes, sir. My brother, look at me. Jesus is able to heal you. You believe that? You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. There is a spirit. I curse that spirit right now. I curse that spirit. Right now, you feel fire going through your body. I curse that spirit upon these legs. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the power of God. I command that spirit. Leave him right now. Move your legs. Start moving your legs. Try to move it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you feeling the legs? Do you feel the legs? Now I release strength to these legs. Right now. I release strength to these legs. In the name of Jesus. I release strength to these legs. Right now. Exercise the legs and let him start moving it. Go ahead. The cry in your family comes to an end. By the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord visits you and brings to an end. He brings to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please call this mama, this madam. Come, he will answer you. Come. Massage his leg. I will tell you when to pick him up. He's visiting you in a strange way, bringing breakthroughs to you, refining the fire. And causing the hand of wickedness over your family. That embargo is lifted over your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come ma. Don't worry. God is touching everybody. Just connect to what he's doing. Mommy. Look at me. Please don't cry. Look at me. Just look at me. I want you to know that the captivity in your family has come to an end. I know you are crying. Don't worry about it. Believe me. Look at me. Where is your husband? He's not here. No, come. Is that all there is to the story? When I left house, he never come back from work. I need to pray because your marriage is shaking. You need the grace of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Mama, don't cry. God is bringing you restoration. That's what I hear in my spirit. And I command and I prophesy restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ. I cause that force of darkness. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at an angel walking through this hole. 
this is what I'm looking at an angel. The Lord wants me to talk to somebody. That person will come under the power of God right now. When that happens, please let me have that person. You have taken all the voices. You have taken all lamentations. You have taken all the praise. You have made let me yours. Please bring out. I give you, I give you, I give you the highest praise. A fire that ignites you and sets you free. I command in the name of Jesus that influence of darkness leaves you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now please. All those who came here specifically for healing miracles, find your way to the front right now. Worship team, give us a powerful session of worship as we pray. Please, don't make it rowdy, inside and outside. Aside from the, the family that I minister to, if you came with a sick person, please come and line up here quickly. Let's save time. Expect the power of God to touch you. Please. You see what the Lord is doing. And all of us who are standing, if there is a loved one or somebody you know, as you are standing, connect to them. Please, don't lose connection with this service. Some of you can take steps of faith. God is already touching people. Don't lose connection. No matter how many we are here to minister to you, it will be a quick walk. Pastor Jexa, it's going to be a very quick walk because of time. There are still some other things God wants to do, especially the prophetic aspect of this meeting. There is a guy outside. The power of God is going to hit him in a mighty way. God is bringing restoration in his life. A gentleman, it will be like a tornado. It will be a mighty encounter. Now listen, all of you standing, I want you to know that Jesus heals. The price for your complete healing has been paid. I know that there are HIV people standing here. There are people with all kinds of medical reports. I guarantee you, the price has been paid. And so as we pray, everyone I'd like you to connect because some of you shortly you will be receiving strong impartations of the healing anointing so you must focus don't be distracted don't be distracted hallelujah Elijah said if you can see me don't don't be distracted please hallelujah please pass your request ushers let's hurry up please get them to the aisle just pass it to the last person the last person by the side please help the ushers inside and outside it's not a ritual there is a strange mystery of answered prayers in this place please begin to pray in tongues as you do that please everywhere begin to pray in tongues all those connecting with us online it's time for them to connect now so that we can Hallelujah. We're not trying to build doctrines out of no no I'm I'm one person that fights tradition, especially where the Spirit of God is not there. But this was an instruction God gave according to what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah carried the threat letter. And brought it to the altar and laid it there before God. Hallelujah. Please, very quickly, inside and outside. If others sent it to you by text and you've not copied it out, just you can just keep it and connect by faith. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord Jesus, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
These are the requests of your people. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. It says, with prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Make it known. Don't hide it. Make it known. Begin to talk to the Lord about what is on the altar here right now. Please pray. Hearing is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Some of you, the request you wrote here, only God can grant it. That's why we don't read it. We just pray. Because probably if some of us see what you've written here, our faith level may not be able to take it. Please make sure everybody's request gets here. No matter how long, let's do it very quickly. I have seen God do strange things. Strange things in the lives of people. We have seen all kinds of dramatic miracles. Please, I want you to know the person you are praying to. I want you to know that it's not to Joshua Selman. It's not to an idol. You are not praying to the president of this nation. The king of kings. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? Myself and Pastor Jakes will be praying passionately on this request. I want you to believe that as we make contact with your request, I tell you the angels, there are some of you as we are praying on it instantly, you will begin to get answers. In one minute, everybody begin to blast in tongues as we pray. Shaka prato soto bala la bala la bala la bala. Hey, se mara na na mosuri na 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 mas. Hey, shapra pakata bala la bala. Rakata prato shupre kiri bala la bala. Hey, shabara la 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 bala. Father, hear the prayers of your people. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let there be all kinds, all kinds of miracles. I agree with my brother, all kinds of miracles. Supernatural jobs, supernatural lifting. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto you that answer prayer with all flesh Blessed Lord, let every cry, every need, Lord, every pain, Lord, let things that look impossible by men, we pray for a change in the name of Jesus. We ask for the hand of God to come mighty, Lord, upon families. Let there be testimonies, Lord, unfolding testimonies. We pray for the hand of God, Lord, to open doors that have been closed. Hitherto, we ask for your mighty miracles, breakthroughs, Lord, the blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Father, we pray for jobs, amazing, blessed jobs, Lord, miracles, miracles, Lord, healings of families, Lord. We pray that, Lord, contracts that have been overdue, Lord, we pray for sudden calls, calls, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, 
the tears of your people, Lord. The needs of your people. In the name of Jesus, we command that angels responsible for bringing answers to these prayers be released right now in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens be open over your people in the blessed name of Jesus. My Father, as we lay these prayer points before you, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus. We ask that doors be opened. Let greatness arise in your people in the blessed name of Jesus. Thank you because God, as we ask in the name of Jesus, we know you answer in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. There is a heavy anointing in this place. Just a few minutes and we'll be done. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of prophecy. I may not be able to call everybody one by one, but the word of God, Kabbalah, he said it's the discerner of the thoughts and the intents. No matter where you are, one word of prophecy can tear open whatever limitation. Please, I want you to believe. Everything you see us do in this miracle service is as instructed. There is no room for entertainment. We fear God and will not gather you to waste your time. Hallelujah. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Lift your hands as your level changes. Lift your hands. Something will happen to you. Please, I want you to receive as I pray. Shout amen from the depth of your heart. Amen means let it be so. It's an act of faith. Hallelujah. I bring to an end the era of mourning in your life and your family. I say it again. The era of mourning by prophecy. Let mourning end in your life and in your family. Hallelujah. Hear me. Every embargo that has stood on the way to your next level, by the weapon of the prophetic, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I command those limitations broken. Human limitations, demonic limitations, I command them broken now. I command them broken now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every dimension you should have entered by now that you have not entered by the mystery of restoration. In the name of Jesus, between now and the next miracle service, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. Hallelujah. I pray for every student here. Listen. This proverb will no longer be used in your life. Listen. That proverb that makes God look as if he's not alive in your academics. In the name that is above all names. We send angels to every department. Of every campus represented here. We send angels to every faculty. May they tear down. May they uproot every trace of wickedness. May they tear down. May they uproot in the name of Jesus. Let missing scripts be found. Let students that have been victimized be restored in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. There are many people you want to take steps but fear is keeping you down. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. I cause fear 
from your life now. I cause fear from your life now. I cause fear. I cause fear in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray for you. There are many who have been praying. Lord, reveal to me the purpose of my existence. There are people who have been crying. I don't want to waste my time in destiny. I pray for you that through a night vision, mysterious prophetic encounters, may your exact assignment be revealed. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are people praying right now. All you, are, you have come here for is the direction for the next level. You just came to get direction. I prophesy to you. The Bible says, and ye shall hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. I command between now and next week, let there be accurate direction. Accurate direction. In the name of Jesus. I pray for you. There are people here whenever they want to favor you people change their minds for reasons you do not understand i pray in the name of jesus that every planting that is not of god that is making your helpers reject you in the name of the lord jesus i command them broken now i command them broken now hallelujah by the power of prophecy I connect you to the men that need to help you and lift you to your next dimension. Please take seriously what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus, I connect you. I connect you. Business helpers, ministry helpers, academic helpers, marital helpers, receive the ministry. In the name of Jesus. Prophecy is like rain. Your job is to receive it. Once you receive it, it starts acting immediately in your life. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ over your health. That spirit that keeps bringing recurrent health conditions. The price has been paid. And therefore by the blood, I break you free from any covenant of infirmity. I break you free from I command everyone under any spirit of infirmity that is recurrent may you be free once and forever. Hallelujah. I challenge embargo of hardship over people and families. There are families that love God, but it's like hardship will never leave them. In the name of Jesus, we stand tonight in this place and we challenge the root of hardship by next miracle service. Return with breakthrough testimonies. Return with breakthrough testimonies. You may not know how it will happen, but may my God go before you and shock you. Hallelujah. I pray for your finances. In the name of Jesus. There are many who are giving. You are tithing. You are faithful. But it just looks like when things are about to happen, there are limitations. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare that beginning from next month, I invoke the mystery of divine supply. The same way, hear me, the same way a raven, the Bible does not tell us where it came from, but it brought bread for the prophet. I command mysteriously, may your gates be open now. 
to receive the forces of the Gentiles. I pray for everyone called dull in this place. You understand but something happens to your mind. That ten times better anointing that distinguishes people. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I sense an anointing. One more time I pray that prayer. Whatever stops you from understanding. The Bible says and he opened their understanding. That they might understand the scriptures. I pray for you. May understanding be granted unto you. Hallelujah. Favor. The one factor that separates men. That favor in a heavy dimension may it mantle you from now. May favor mantle you from now. In the name of Jesus. Financial favor. Marital favor. Academic favor. Favor in your job. Favor in ministry. Hallelujah. Everyone who is confused about life, any aspect of life, I bring that confusion to an end now. I pray for all those who came here specifically, trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Mazuka parata teleka. In fact, I pray for you. Listen, not just physical barrenness, any area of your life. This is the year of the rain. And when rain falls, barrenness stops. Therefore, I command, be fruitful in the name of Jesus. Fruitful. Multiply. Replenish. Subdue. And have dominion. In the name of Jesus. I command everything called dead in your life. And your family. I don't care for how long it has died. Your health your business, your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command resurrection right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. There are people who desire God. You desire an encounter. That's what you need. You desire an encounter. I pray for you. May the angel of the Lord's presence visit you. You may not understand what I'm saying. May the angel of the Lord's presence visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your gift. Your ability. Your skill. Whatever you are using that brings bread. Help her please. I pray for you. The works of your hands. Because you are determined to be diligent. You will see the testimonies that will come from this prayer. I put an anointing on your skill. I put an anointing. I put an anointing on your ability. I put an anointing on your gift, on your work, on your skill. May it begin to produce in a supernatural dimension. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. I just want to do an impartation. There are people who have come from different places. Please be sensitive. We are out of time. We will soon round up. But it's time to receive something. Listen. Listen, I told you there will be many impartations. Hear me. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. Are you hearing what I'm saying? no matter what you are doing when the grace is not there you will struggle forever please hear me especially in ministry if you are a minister of the gospel in this place help that please it's time for you to catch this thing for real it's yours for the taking listen I want to pray 
as I stretch my hands and pray inside and outside, wherever you are, you must not be in ministry like fivefold. Whatever area, many of you will begin to have dreams, encounters. Listen, many of you will step into healing graces. There's no time to move one by one. But I'm going, it's one of the major assignments God gave me tonight. Please believe it. You will argue it at your own detriment. There is a cheap route. The help of God is here to lift you. The help of God is here to take you. Lift your hands, everybody. Father, I pray that in the next two minutes, let there be from the front to the back, outside, let there be strange impartations at the count of three. One, two, three. Let the wind blow right now. Receive it. Prophetic graces. Apostolic graces. Eprotosia. Dreams. Visions. Encounters. Dreams. Visions. Encounters. The word of knowledge. Gifts of the spirit. Let there be distributions. Right now. Right now. Right now. The gift of wisdom. The word of knowledge. The working of miracles. The gift of tongues. An interpretation of tongues. The gift of prophecy. Gifts of healing. Healing mantles. Receive it. Receive it. Leadership anointings. Leadership anointings. Leadership anointings. I impart it. Leadership anointings. Utterance, utterance, utterance. I release it to you. Utterance in the name of Jesus to communicate the things of the Spirit. Utterance, receive it. Utterance, I, I release upon you insight into scriptures, insight into the mysteries of the kingdom. I grant you access by grace to the mysteries of the spirit, the mysteries of dominion, the mysteries of prosperity, the mysteries of impact. Hallelujah. The final prayer I want to pray for you is honor many of you don't know what honor is honor is not the same thing as blessings you can be blessed but not honorable it says and Jabez was more honorable honor that fragrance that compels loyalty that fragrance zamatically lord everyone under the sound of my voice inside and outside may this grace that that will bring honor to a man beyond your age beyond your level receive it now in the name of jesus i release it from the depths of my heart receive it in the name of jesus from today everywhere you go may honor follow you and i declare these hands that are lifted like aaron like Joshua lifted up the hands of his servant Moses, I command may those hands never go down may the Lord cut off from your life everything that will bring your hands down and I pray for marriages supernaturally may God connect people supernaturally in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members no matter where they are i prophesy as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members hallelujah now very quickly you are here you've never given your heart to the lord please hear me please keep standing everybody no moving around let's honor them just in one minute you're here inside and outside. You have never made a decision for Jesus Christ. 
Or at one time you have made a decision for Jesus, but you found yourself dwindling. You have seen the hand of God and Jesus is calling you back home. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Don't let any man cajole you. Win the war in your heart today for the sake of your destiny. Wherever you are, please start running from your seat inside and outside and come out here. I want to lead you personally to Christ and pray for you. Go ahead. Are there people like that? Go ahead. Don't look at any neighbor. Don't look at anyone. Wherever you are, inside or outside, don't pretend it. Jesus is calling you very quickly. Very quickly. Where are those who are giving their lives to Jesus? Inside or outside? Make your way to the front. Don't be ashamed. Please appreciate them coming on here as they come. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. No matter how far, rush and make your way. Young and old. God bless you. Keep coming. It's time to make it right. Don't play games with destiny. Jesus is calling you. Come and surrender everything. Totally and consciously. Totally and consciously. Please make way for them. Don't stop them. Make way for them. Come to Jesus. Hallelujah. I salute and congratulate every one of you for coming out. Hallelujah. The prayer you are praying is not reciting a poem. I want you to pray from the depths of your heart. Lift your right hand and say after me. Passionately and truly. Say Lord Jesus. I love you. And I believe in you. I believe you died for me. You rose again for me. I surrender. Completely to you. Take charge of my life from today and forever. I denounce sin. I denounce Satan. And I receive eternal life into my spirit. Keep your hands lifted. Father, receive these ones. Change them. Transform their lives radically. I cause the power of sin from your life. And I release grace upon you to experience that which Christ has done for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, everything that keeps drawing you to sin, I curse it right now. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Thank you for this great decision. Please follow the ushers, the gentlemen with the jerseys. They will have your details and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.